Hello everyone who came in time. Thank you very much for being so punctual. I think we have breaks with Zoom connection. Everything is okay? Oh, right. So, uh, those of you who came first, did you were on any tour? On a tram? Yeah? And river. Okay, so we still have a good, good job. Thank you for coming on time. Great. So, what are your impressions? Can you share like the most outstanding impression or thought about the tour? The walk yeah, so can you share with other teams and maybe make them envious of your tour? Can you share? Yeah? Go ahead. Yeah, as to those who were on a different tour. I was on Vinica Transport uh, tour. We visited the buildings of the tram depot. We saw how the maintenance is carried out. And we learned about the history of development of Vinica Transport. So we learned about advantages of uh, the Vinica Transportation System, the technologies that they use for development, for renovation of the transport system and its city. Those who are the residents of of Vinitsa and those who work in the transport sphere, they learned about Zamistanska Street, which is a wonderful place. Then we saw the completion of uh, reconstruction of uh, Patotsky Street, and I visited that myself, and I was so pleased to learn uh, about uh, the very specific features of development of public transportation system in Vinitsa. Thank you so much. Anybody else ready to share their impressions? Rivers? Okay. Hello, I'm Maria and I'm from Vinitsa myself. So Vinitsa is my native city, but still I had a possibility to learn about small rivers today because uh, the guide uh, said that it was so important to discuss that because not all residents of Vinica know um, the number of rivers we have here and we have a lot of areas where these rivers run with the residential areas as well so we visited a recreational area and uh, residents of other cities and towns were able to see other districts of Vinica and ask experts about the residents residential construction, about history of the district, and we, our group, visited Dyaktanet River. This is one of the rivers flowing into southern Bug, Pivdane Bug, so it was a little bit dirty, yeah, uh, but still I hope that everybody will remember that, so that's, thank you. Thank you, Maria. And, um, Anybody from uh, the, the, another group, the, the third group? Yeah, the task was to make everybody jealous. So why they should be jealous? We walked and we were. Uh, 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 and we drove around. Yeah, we had Vinitz uh, tram, we, not Swiss tram, uh, which created positive impression as well. And then we visited the district, which is not fantasy, not something that will happen in the future. We saw something happening right here and now. And the third point to make you jealous, we were not only listening and watching, we were talking, we were asking the most difficult questions, like what type of trees we are you going to have here? Here, why grass look like that, and what is the weeding, uh, the, you know, and what is uh, Vienna uh, Vienna bus stop? So, uh, yeah, you, I encourage you to sign up for that tour. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you had a very busy morning, and I hope you still have strength to listen and to participate in our discussions. We have two discussions upcoming today, and the final part, uh, the uh, 
uh, will uh, sum up uh, the results. We also have uh, different locations where we share uh, international experience. We still have two locations and all par participants will come back here uh, for the closing ceremony. Those of you who came uh, from other places, we are great to welcome, happy to welcome you. And we have also an information channel. We have a QR code for you to join a communication channel in WhatsApp here or at the registration stand. You can scan the code and you will receive all links, presentations and other important information about upcoming events. So please don't forget to join that channel and uh, any changes to the agenda will also be posted on that channel. At the registration stand, uh, there is an urban declaration uh, forum declaration. If you had a chance to read it during your registration, you could see that there are a lot of items there which we are discussing today and which we discussed yesterday. And if you support that, you can sign that declaration personally or on behalf of your organization. So both is possible. For as an urban forum, you can sign the declaration. It will be posted after the end of this forum. And if you agree with everything that's included there, if you are ready to sign, please do so today during the day. Thank you. And then let us start our discussion. I'm going to give floor to Alexander Shevchenko, the founder of uh, Project Zvitsi and Restart Ukraine. And we are going to talk about regional policies, so I will not keep you any longer. And looking forward to listening to interesting insights. Thank you. My name is Oleksandr Shevchenko, and after yesterday, I uh, decided uh, to revise my um, calling myself an urbanist after Ivan's uh, lecture yesterday. But I am a founder of the project of Restart Ukraine. But uh, we are not going to discuss myself today. We are going to have a discussion. And today, panel discussions topic is how regional policy can facilitate balanced uh, recovery. And uh, we would like to have it in a format of, of a discussion involving the audience. So if you have any questions, please write them down or remember them, park them somewhere, and we will pay attention because yesterday somehow we did not uh, pay enough attention to interaction with the audience. But this is one of the reasons why we are here. And the message to our speakers is that I am going to to be a nice but a very um, s severe moderator, so we'll take uh, floor to redirect our um, discussion because the regional policy is such a vast topic and there are so many points of view, so we would like to be as focused as possible in order to understand what balanced regional policy for Ukrainian recovery means today. And as to the points of views, Today, we have online and offline participants, so we have a balanced gender representation, and we also have representatives of various sectors with us today. So we hope that we will have representatives of the governmental institutions as well as representatives from oblast centers, civil society organizations, territorial communities, and the academia. Uh, so I will present our speakers briefly, and then let us dive into the first round of targeted uh, questions. And then we will continue our discussion. We have Alexandra Azarkina, Deputy Minister for Development of uh, Territories. She is with us online. We hope to get a sign from Zoom 
have at some point, uh, if not, then we will deal with that. Victoria Batsis is the secretary of the City Council of Vosnesensk, Romada Mikolaev regions. Konstantin Mezentsev, head of the Department of Economic and Social Geography of Taras Shevchenko National University of Kyiv, and the coordinator of the laboratory effects of war of the international project Labs for Twins, um, Twin Research. We also have Ivan Podolan with us. He's from Cherkasy and head of the NGO called Cherkasy Urban Institute. Let us greet our speakers. I have to ask a question. Do we have Alexandra with us? Alexandra not connected. So, and then we have other speakers. So, I would like to start with the question of regional policy and how it should be formulated at the governmental level. We have a law on regional policy dated, uh, adopted back in 2015, and I would like to quote it as a starting point for our, point for our discussion today. This law reads that the primary task for the new regional policy back in 2015 is facilitating economic growth in the regions, is increasing their economic capacity through using local potential, creating new jobs, improving employment potential for chances for the population, creating conditions for bringing labor migrants back, which will lead to improved living conditions for all people, regardless of the place they were born, where they live, and where they will reside in the future. And my question was for Alexander, initi Alexandra initially, whether the ministry sees the same principles and um, principles for development of regional policies uh, until today. Alexandra connected, right? Hello, hello. Alexandra, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. And we are waiting for the video from you. I'm glad to hear you. Same here. I apologize uh, for not being able to be present in person. I have a technical question. Can you see us? Or I, I see you. Yeah, perfect picture. Okay. While we are waiting for the video, I will uh, like to remind uh, that we have Konstantin Mezentse from the National University of Taras Shevchenko, Victoria Balzer from Voznesensk Hromada, and Ivan Podolan, head of the NGO called Cherkasy Urban Institute. Alexandra. My name is Alexander Shevchenko. We've met with you. Have you heard my introduction before I... No, not just the final part of it, but I could start with telling you a little bit about how we are trying to de determine this planning architecture in the ministry. And from the architecture, we can proceed with the values and with checks and balances that we are going to introduce to make these values real and not just existing on paper. So thank you very much for giving me the possibility to speak today. I think it's extremely important to have such platforms for discussions, for planning, and for us to be able to discuss the things develop, the related to development of uh, uh, cities and towns uh, in view of recovery, because it's recovery for us, it's not only about infrastructure, but it's also about institutions. And we have a unique chance to demonstrate how physical infrastructure can help us change the logic of relations between the state, community, and individuals as such. And the, in the same way, we're talking about the decentralization reform that should lead to amendments to the Constitution, but we would like this reform to be closer to individuals, and that's why we'll focus on local democracy on self-organization of the population so that we can ensure not theoretical but practical involvement of civil society, of uh, citizens into rethinking our uh, statehood. So we have traditional tools of the state regional policy. We have the state strategy for regional development. We initiated revision of this strategy, and this is a process 
uh, which is not about the content only, but also about uh, inclusion of all st stakeholders into the consultation process. So we adopted uh, all basic resolutions and we are going to organize series of consultations. The state strategy for regional development focuses on relevant challenges that are related to the war as well as this, the possibilities that are opened up for us by the Euro integration process. And now we are revising the state strategy for regional development ending uh, 2027 and we are tuned to the European institutions values. We would like to have our community and regions be ready to work with the funds of the European Union so that we are able to uh, use all the possibilities of development offered by the European Union accession. At the same time, working on this strategy, we are also developing a geo-information system for development and the recovery of the regions. This is a monitoring system uh, for monitoring the status of the regions, and it will be used for planning and amending the strategy because this will be a data set in real-time mode that can be processed and adapted. And at the same time, it's related to funding because if we do not have this understanding where funds will come from, everything will just remain an empty declaration. That's why we are now discussing, planning, modeling how we should reorient the state fund for regional development. The Parliament voted for the initiative that we developed together with the Committee on Budget, according to which the funds planned for this year will uh, also be uh, uh, involved in uh, uh, the, or regulated by voting in India, and this will enable us to involve citizens from the regions, and we will select real projects, not populistic, but the project. It will enable us to support the projects that were preliminary selected by the Commission, and uh, in a certain way, this will prevent corruption as well, because when a decision is focused, uh, is concentrated in the ministry or the parliamentary committee, there are a lot of risks. We would like to go beyond the framework of this system. System, and we would like to have at least midterm planning approach. And in the, for this, we revise the state strategy, and we are actually take this financial tools that will be based not on voting competitions and commissions, but it, they will be based on indicators. For instance, if we have some regions with tuberculosis problem, problems, uh, then we have regions with the mobility problems. And these indicators will be synchronized with the statistics. And uh, it will create not just a voluntaristic framework, but like, uh, we will have a very realistic picture. And this is the basic value for our team. But this is not enough if we are talking about what needs to be done within the recovery framework. And for this classic tool of regional policy also includes uh, the tools for recovery and development of the regions. This new entity was created in Parliament by Parliament last year. It belongs to the regional policy family, but it's permeated with the infrastructure planning vision because this a recovery plan and this is just uh, a existence of a list of investments that are necessary for a recovery from the level of a community to the level of region and to the national level because we have the state strategy coming from up from the top to the, the bottom and uh, this recovery plan goes from bottom to the top uh, because the community identifies the priorities and needs and then this problem is raised to the national level and then the government adopts the final plan. I like this approach because this balances this top to bottom and bottom to the top approach because we have communication and reconciliation of interest, and at the same time, it's very, very specific. But what is lacking here, in my opinion, we need more in-depth planning uh, instruments here, and then we 
need this system for development of comprehensive development programs, which is also a new approach for our planning documents. It was also introduced last year, and it's a little bit more complicated for communities because it requires a lot of resources because we need to study all social economic factors, pollution indicators, for instance, if the community was liberated uh, after occupation and if it's contaminated with the mines. So we need a complete analysis of everything existing in this territory. And so we ask the communities to develop these programs and to invest into that because this is a very fundamental document, which is not mandatory, but in fact, we are trying to create the situation when all investments coming not from the local level, but that come from external donors or this from the state budget, they all should be based on such fundamental documents. So on one side, we're taking the bottom to top needs, we're collecting them. But that's not completely voluntary. This is part of a systemic vision of where a specific community is moving on to. If the community decided to be a touristic uh, community, they shouldn't be led on to be an industrial community. This should be agreed upon. <laughs> when it's all part of a one-pager, this sounds difficult. If it hadn't been for digital instruments, it would have been hell. But thanks to the strategy of the digital development, we have the Dream Gov UA system that we have launched and presented in London, the next update in October. Uh, these things are made real, and my dream of strategizing, making not just theoretical work, but a practical, real part of uh, decision making. This dream is coming true. Uh, so, any questions? Uh, I, I'd be happy to take. Well, let's ask the moderator question. Uh, according to the decree given by the Cabinet of Ministers on uh, the development of regions and communities issued uh, on July 19th, a week ago, there is a specific order to update regional policy for the territories that are supposed to be uh, under the recovery category, the uh, community after uh, the community after war times, the uh, critically uh, the critically damaged and the, mo the ones with the most IDP numbers uh, to the neighboring regions or to other countries. So the procedure says that this status is given by the commission 10 days. And in 10 days, these communities, these regions are supposed to launch this process of developing this recovery plan. Also, this decree says that the community shall, re shall have two months to launch the recovery plan and taking into account the principles uh, of Lugano and London build better back. My uh, clarifying question is that uh, isn't there a risk that in these two months, which is a very short period of time, won't we receive just the plans of fixing, the plans of uh, reconstruction and a wish list from the head of the community on how they see the development of uh, wishful thinking of their community? Because when we're talking about uh, regional development, it's not just a list of um, uh, wishes from uh, various uh, communities it's a consolidated vision from the communities of the region and the second clarifying question is how do you see the platform for strategizing and communication of various stakeholders not only the cabinet of ministers and the government because the d's and dream are technical instruments that simplify operating a large amounts of data but they don't by itself give the concept uh, of something completely new, uh, non-existent in communities before. So if you could reflect on that, please. Thank you. So uh, the first one about the recovery plans. First of all, the commission. The commission has approved the decree by the vice prime minister, Denis Kubrakov. It has 50% from ministry, 50% from the uh, members of the parliament how to define these territories. Now, two months' time. In fact, 
these recovery plans are not a complex um, uh, development, a complex document. It's about the complex development of the communities. We tried to highlight it so to avoid just getting a wish list. So we are now. Every, we, are, we now have every document with its uh, specific purpose. Why is it important to approve this document without delay in it? Because, for example, when it uh, when we we're talking about the investments for the communities, we need to base that on their priorities. For example, when we're talking about using the funds from uh, the foundation to uh, on eliminating the the armed aggression consequences. This is part from the NBU, this fund, and uh, part from, uh, is from the amount of uh, the arrested uh, Russian property. This would be used to undo the consequences of uh, the uh, dam explosion, Kahovka dam explosion, the uh, serious shellings. That's where they take the funds for restoration uh, of the housing, partly. And another part, according to the Decree 118, with three basic uh, points. The projects are uh, are supplied, are given by the communities themselves. Second point, it must follow the methodology from rice experts. And next, we want to legalize and uh, approve the methodology developed by the World Bank. And last point it should be digitalized so we have a test run three important approaches that are not just a declaration for us but part of the logic of decision taking but we have also received our proposals uh, 24 on 24.5 billion grivnas uh, from all of the communities and we uh, using the prioritization we're able to assess, according to our criteria, how uh, relevant investments are. But that's not sufficient if we want better planning. Of course, this instrument will help evaluate the relevance of the investments. But the procedure 118 says these procedures, even after the methodology filter, they must be in line with the general development program. Until we receive that uh, umbrella program, all of the decision making is in the mode of urgency. We would like to, to um, get out of that urgency mode and um, do something more uh, long term. But this process is based not only on what the communities are developing these two months, it's also about the updated strategy of regional development. So the communities will have six months. Uh, this is a positive point. We've d discussed this with the associations of local self-government. We are ready to uh, keep uh, raising awareness. This is uh, part one of the response to your question. Next, about involving the experts and uh, the community. The architecture of the planning that we tried to uh, explain in a simplified manner, we are harmonizing it with the plan for Ukraine uh, according to the Ukraine facility plan. The Ukraine facility plan is a mechanism, a complex instrument uh, suggested by the Euro Commission in order to assist Ukraine in preparation to join the EU and at the same time to recover our infrastructure after the uh, military aggression. Uh, I, I make a joke that it's uh, a plan on how to get 50, bil 50 million euros and, uh, and, and stay out of jail and uh, keep all your hair from getting gray. But the plan there is to proclaim our purpose, plan the reforms to achieve it, and plan on the investments uh, that uh, Ukraine is ready to cover by itself or use the European funds, or use the European investments in the formats of uh, loans or in the format of grants. And with that instrument, we're focusing these efforts in regional policies, in sectoral policies, there is a decree from the Vice uh, Prime Minister that every adjacent ministry have, has to update their sectoral programs up to 2027 because when we're talking about local or regional projects, we have to align it with the plans and programs of our regional policy. And when we are talking about um, 
recovery of an educational facility. This has to align with the policy of the sectoral ministry. What is their vision of the educational network? What uh, other resources do the students have? Because, of course, every community wants uh, many kindergartens, many schools, multiple facilities, even if the neighboring community has um, better infrastructure and you only need to buy a bus to travel to that commu community. So we need the role, the harmonizing role of uh, the sectoral ministry for the recovery plan. It takes me so long to explain because in this recovery plan we have planned questionnaires, focus groups and very wide scale consultations on the level of regions, sectors with engaging of the public and the experts. Of course we are the ministry that will initiate it, organize it. We have received a preliminary approval that our partners are supporting these uh, consultations on the recovery plan. Thank you, Alexandra. I will give the floor to Ivan Podolian because he has a clarifying question. A first uh, question from Alexandra. I'd like to get into more detail to this question because I am trying to use these ideas, uh, to trying to imagine how those ideas would uh, work in my community. The community might lack expertise and vision to step out of the limits of these complicated infrastructural uh, plans and objects without understanding that uh, the certain communities, uh, certain regions will face depopulation, severe depopulation. So how would we involve expertise into the communities where it is lacking, where there's not enough expertise to make these complex programs for regional or commun communal development. Thank you for the question. You you, you have a point. Uh, the recovery must begin with the communities and it should have a leading role, but leadership is capacity and leadership is responsibility. Let's talk about capacity. In fact, we have given all of our partners and donors, we have uh, we've made a call, please formulate the opportunities of work on the level of communities. There are lots of uh, expert uh, organizations in Kyiv, but locally in provinces it's critically lacking. We have a program to support the communities, uh, supported by a Canadian CLEAR program, community leadership recovery program uh, which is which is basically rebranded Goverla project we just asked them to reorient to uh, prioritize the local level as I expected uh, until autumn we will launch several offices at the local level and on the pan regional level so that they are like magnets for the communities uh, for getting expertise and support. Here our role is uh, purely coordinational because there are many projects but they duplicate each other. Uh, they are not aware of each other's focus of activity and our task is to organize their work according to per, uh, the, the work on evaluation of programs, on planning. Now the platform is correct but in the upcoming several months it will be a lot of hard work together when it comes to programs of uh, complex development. There's a project called Dobre, who developed the methodology and uh, clear instructions for the communities of uh, how to implement this program with a minimum of resources. But, well, at least there's a project uh, launch in this. All of uh, all of the projects you've been mentioning uh, base their activity on municipal statistics. We have already worked with the state agency on statistics with their experts. We want to discuss this issue, this problem, so that at EEC this information is available central in a centralized manner and any community can apply, inquire and receive that information or find out what's going on in neighboring communities because without that we'll be just uh, be uh, all stuck in our own bubble. <clears throat> okay, another clarification from Victoria and then we'll uh, move on to the second part of the uh, panel discussion. Okay, question, what role in this process belongs to the 
oblast, regional administrations, and uh, rayon district administrations. Okay, if we're talking about the classic regional policy, there is the state, um, uh, the national-wide level, the regional level, and the territorial community level. On the regional level, many th decisions are taken uh, for prioritizing, and the community receives their priority from this level. When we're talking about the recovery, it's from bottom to top. The community declares their needs and then communicates these needs upwards. If we're talking about the update of the regional strategy of development, there is um, a lot of attention given to the nationwide plan, but with priorities to uh, local recovery. We've been talking to one association about uh, relevant analysis of uh, the division of authority, because many experts think that uh, the district council should not be pre represented at all. Some of uh, the experts think that um, they should be there, uh, which is uh, supported by the articles of the constitution. So depending on the region, this division of authority looks differently, which is not normal. We should regulate this and unify it. We have already de discussed this with our, the profile associations. We'll be happy to um, hear any ideas because the region, the role of the regional level is indispensable too. Yeah. Alexandra, do you have any right to stay at uh, to stay online? Because we'll have a Q and A session from the from the audience. Thanks. Uh, I'll be listening. I'm not uh, leaving the Zoom meeting. I'm sorry for not being he there uh, personally, but thanks for the high quality expert discussion. Let's uh, thank Alexandra for her participation. And going back to our offline format, I would like the colleagues to uh, bring the first question on screen so that we talk to the audience a bit. And the first question is, it's very open. What, what do you think is the benefit of regional policy? Let me say a couple of words. I will share another uh, mentee link uh, to the, our channel. If, if, if somebody is not there yet, I will share the QR code. I will give you a QR code to use to, to, to join to the mentee. War, menti.com and the QR code that you see on the top of the screen, 36020099. If you joined yesterday, you can use the same link to join and answer the question. What do you think is the benefit of regional policy? Another minute, we'll wait for you. That will help us form our discussion better between the panelists on stage. I like the uh, response that says anarchy. Okay, at the same time, we see these response, this response on screen. We will keep that in mind. Let me present in more detail Victoria Balzer, the municipal secretary of uh, Vosnesensk. She represents self-governance. Yesterday, we had the joke because Vinitsa and Vosnesensk are located at the same river, Bukh. Uh, she said that uh, Vosnesensk is drinking what Vinnytsia is discharging, which is a part of the regional policy. Victoria, a question to you. Uh, last spring, Vosnesensk has won uh, a, new, a new role of a Ukrainian city that, uh, that saw the stopping of the Ukrainian troops in their moving towards Odessa. This is uh, the uh, southernmost uh, part, southernmost settlement. I've been talking to Vosnesensk territorial community. They said they've seen the 
maps used by the occupants uh, depicting Vosnesensk as one of the key hubs for them on their uh, route to attack Odessa. How do you see the Odessa as the regional district center today in the context of a quick recovery and quick operational tasks as part of Mykolaiv region and as uh, the direct rival for human and financial resources with the settlement of Yuzhna Ukrainsk that uh, is um, of similar uh, of similar size and is located near and has the, uh, uh, the nuclear station. We have no rivalry with Yuzhna Ukrainsk because they have stable uh, subventions from the state budget and they have different development strategy. If we are talking about recovery, Rivaznesensk was the town that stopped Russian invasion in the south of Ukraine, but we paid with the damaged infrastructure, especially transport infrastructure. Three bridges were uh, uh, de destroyed, one automobile and two uh, railway bridges. Uh, going to Odessa and to Kiev, and that had a negative impact on the life of our community because those uh, uh, bridges that were exploded uh, the, during the active phase in Mykolaiv region, that uh, was not felt so badly by the community because the transportation flow was smaller and only military was moving there. But after liberation of Mykolaiv region, liberation of Kherson, the um, uh, flow of vehicles to the south of Ukraine increased significantly because humanitarian uh, assistance was delivered, construction materials were delivered, and everything went through Voskresensk. This uh, automobile bridge that was destroyed, uh, we were thinking about quick recovery. We thought about constructing a temporary dam uh, connecting to uh, banks of the river. And we did that in cooperation between local residents, local businesses, budget funds. And we made a prompt solution. And first of all, that gave us a possibility for uh, the state uh, treason. And if Russian troops came again, then uh, we uh, would be under threat because that dam could not be damaged. But then we understood that the Russians would not come. And the second problem was that we did not involve the community, did not take into consideration their opinion. It was not sustainable decision. So everything goes uh, 10 meters away from a residential area and there is no normal road. Uh, there is sand and uh, tones and people were so unhappy that everything came to their backyards and they called us irresponsible and were complaining about us creating in such a problem in the town center, but we said that uh, that was a temporary solution which became more or less permanent. And a year and a half year later, this summer, we were able to normalize the situation on this road. The asphalt was laid um, over this layer of sand and stone, but still residents were unhappy because now they need a sidewalk. But we have residential buildings next to this road, these uh, gardens and yards. So we feel this tension inside the community at all times, constant displeasure. So our solutions are behind the changes of the situation. So this is a small case of recovery that we had in an emergency mode. Uh, the most important thing for us as a community is, in my opinion, is planning. We need certain strategy. We need to, uh, to have a vision in our community, whether we compete or not compete, whether we become the center for development of certain activities and what is our role in the upcoming recovery process. So that uh, requires more than two months. Uh, in fact, uh, we are working for more than a year now, and we still do not have any tangible results, and we hope that we will change the situation because not a, there is no single community that can do it single-handedly. We need uh, involvement of experts, uh, best practices, basic technical solutions that will help us to reach um, a new level of 
So that was briefly. Yeah, I, 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 I would have two clarifying questions. So what are the main obstacles to intermunicipal co cooperation? And the second is, what are the barriers for efficient cooperation with the Oblast Center? For intermunicipal cooperation, we have more opportunities than barriers. But the, the, uh, one municipality in this case should act as a leader. So we cannot sit down at a table or we're drinking coffee, three of us. We still need someone who will take the driver's seat. We have a center for provision of administrative services, which is funded by four communities, and they, they provide services to four uh, communities. We acted as a leader in that case. We uh, were the driving force, and we developed all the solutions. So we need a leader for that. We need a wide range of data, and we hope that at the national level, something will be decided regarding the registers, the statistics, because it's very difficult to make decisions without uh, estimates and forecasts and all available data so if you have the data but no forecasts uh, it will will give you n nothing and we have different level of development of various communities some have resources have, have some have managerial structures so we need that we need data and we need opportunities uh, international technical assistance uh, project uh, or offered some carrots for us. For instance, if you organize intermunicipal cooperation, we, you will receive this and that. And we need these carrots because it's very difficult for communities to bring their resources together. So when we have some motivation, then we will go with it for it. We have a conflict with a neighboring uh, rural uh, community. Uh, that stole some land plots from us, from our town community. We laid the new boundary. We started a reconciliation. They refused to give land back to us. And now we are in the process of court litigation. So for us, the boundaries are now clear. And it's not clear how we have to cooperate with them. And Mykolaiv then, with regional oblast authorities, it's extremely important. All information is now concentrated in the oblast. Mykolaiv has uh, all these meetings with Danish international organizations um, and uh, oblast authorities. They have certain agreements concerning further cooperation, but we would like to be more involved into this process because we're physically not in Mykolaiv at all time. So for us, it's very important to be of the co-authors of the would-be regional recovery policy because we have something to offer and almost has something to offer for us. Yes, Alexandra mentioned that as well. And it's very important to emphasize here how important it is to have not only Zoom meetings, but to have some physical platform, decentralized platforms where all participants can meet. Thank you, Victoria. Now I will address a question to Ivan briefly up to five minutes in your opinion how Cherkasy managed to play the role of a regional leader and what are the fundamental principles for the uh, regional development program because Cherkasy was not damaged and is not within the recovery program so yeah we have Konstantin and Ivan from Cherkasy yeah that's why they are smiling yeah, Konstantin is smiling because he knows all the specific features, uh, characteristics of our town or city and uh, its leadership potential. Unfortunately, we're not happy with what we have, but I think every city uh, has uh, this criticism of local authorities and local leaders. So it's very important here to compare the towns and cities and oblast centers and regional leadership centers. Unfortunately, I have to admit that Cherkasy uh, is not a leading city in the central region of Ukraine. If we uh, speak about the structure of interaction of all the stakeholders involved in the recovery processes at the regional level, then we have to mention Oblast Council, Oblast Administration, District Councils, and local communities. And here we can say that 
in the majority of regions, this cooperation between oblast administration and municipalities is not always okay. Cherkasy is not an exception here. We have this regular conflict situation, and that prevents us from working efficient, efficiently. In Cherkasy oblast, uh, the leading role, I'd say, is still played by the oblast administration. Maybe it is because we have a very strict presidential vertical that sets the tone and uh, the pace, and there were some very good stuff, decisions made in Kiev, so they appointed good people for Cherkasy Oblast, so the leading role is placed by the, played by the Oblast administration. If we are talking about involvement of the region and Cherkasy city in the recovery processes, unfortunately, and I think it's typical not only for Cherkasy and the region, Oblast, there are no programs for supporting other regions. I see initiatives, leadership initiatives, when um, resources are mobilized from business, from the communities, for some humanitarian missions, when uh, as a response to some emergency situations in the uh, in other territories of Ukraine and more affected communities, yes. We have some leadership and some coordination here, but it's leadership and coordination, but nothing about developing programs, uh, allocating budget funds. Now we hear, see some effort from the central authorities to make these decentralized local resources uh, concentrated on uh, emergency challenges. At, uh, but now all these challenges uh, are related to the military situation, and I still do not see any initiatives at local or national level when some of the funds of the communities are invested into the uh, recovery projects in other communities. So we, there is a very slippery area here when we can see threats for the decentralization reform, when the community decides for itself, how it manages its funds. So we still have to find this balance between the national needs and local needs. And uh, probably communities can initiate some horizontal interaction with other communities. But again, the question is who would initiate this cooperation? Who can become the driving force? for initiating these horizontal relations. This can be IDPs, in my opinion, who can represent their communities from which they were relocated to the host communities. And then the question is how organized the community of IDPs is, how able they are to communicate efficiently, to provide analysis, to organize this horizontal cooperation. Perhaps a, as an idea, if we're talking about horizontal interaction, uh, we should um, start discussing some issues related to like an old tool which is obsolete, but still we have this military brotherhood notion that was re revived during the war. But these brother towns, it still is very formalistic uh, and neutered, and now it can be filled with new senses and uh, can be revived if we understand that our communities are able to grow up. So the, the childhoods uh, era, they were asking for something, give us that, give us that. Then they came to the teenage era, era when they decided that they can do everything on their own. And now we can, we are reaching this conventional adulthood era when the community can assume responsibility for other more affected communities. Thank you, Ivan. Yes, our today's discussion is built 
on specific subjective cases of uh, local communities, towns, and oblast centers, and we will also involve some academic data. I was talking to Konstantin before this meeting. I asked him how long he's been involved in regional policies, and he said that he started uh, as a lecturer in, in, at university in 1997, and this is the year when I went to school. So my question for Konstantin is, yeah, you have this vast economic background and this sphere. Could you briefly, if possibly, to characterize the regional policy trends in dynamics over the last 30 years? Yes, it's not new. Something happened in the past. Something was changing. Somehow we reached this moment where we are today and we have to move on. So can you outline some tendencies and, again, the movements over this period of time? Thank you for this difficult and simple task. I would like to start by saying that the regional policy, for me, it looks like an ancient town. Yeah, when we start excavating some ancient towns, we can see many, many layers bringing us deeper and deeper. If we start digging into the regional policy of Ukraine, let us go back to mid-90s, yeah, 1994, 1995, when new resolutions of the Cabinet of Ministers were adopted on the state programs for social economic development of the regions for Polisa, for Ukrainian Black Sea Zone, Carpathian region. So this programmatic approach to economic, at that period, it was very trendy. Everybody was developing regional programs. And one of the first disciplines I started teaching at university had approximately the same names, like forecasting and programming regional developments. These were the top notions. Then uh, the, the first foreign experts came, giving us advice how these regional programs should be developed, various visions, discussions were taking place. Um, we had the meetings discussing which methodologies should be used, additional recommendations. Like for instance, the SWOT analysis should be carried out. And until today, SWOT analysis is one of the key methods used for, the regional, for developing regional programs. And we're still using it today. Then they developed these programs, and then funding was lacking, so they postponed it. I have these programs still, and sometimes I bring them and show them to my students, still machine typed. And it's very interesting because the communities were trying to get involved. They submitted their proposals, like we need a road in this area, we need a, to construct a stadium or capital repair of the residential uh, buildings. Then if we go uh, to the next level in the year of 2000, there was a law adopted on the forecasting and programming the state development. And this uh, law is still in force. And if we uh, look into the program uh, uh, programs, so the, there are still referrals to this law. And have you ever heard about it? So for each region, the forecast should be developed for the midterm perspective for every five years. And the question to colleagues is, have you ever seen any estimates or forecast for development of your regions for the upcoming five years? And do you take them into consideration? Yeah, so the, cons the main consumer of these documents is the state archive. So when they are developed, they are sent directly to the archive. So this is the target audience for this program. Yeah, 2005, yeah, five years uh, later. What do we see there? We see um, regulation on the, uh, stimulating development of regions. And we had a new trend in concept of a depressed territory. Foreign experts came. They gave us advice on how to determine depressed territories, grants were allocated, and all territories tried to prove that they were depressed because, yeah, we need to build, uh, to construct a stadium, to repair um, houses. All these carrots, they were working, yes. And everybody was discussing, but not discussing, but we were
for listening what the press territories worry about, yeah, give us money, and so on. And then research of the press territories also uh, received grants. Um, and then everything was covered with earth and forgotten. And my association here is when when we were typing the word depressed in the computer, and the compute the word corrected this word, and they uh, changed it for repressed. And for me, yeah, it's rather correct because they were repressed and they disappeared, and nobody was talking about them anymore. And then the state strategies for state develop regional development were drafted for the period ended ending 2015, and the primary goal was to ensure competitive capacity of the region. So everybody was studying competitive capacity. So it was no longer about depression but about competitive capacity. So everybody was trying to prove that they were competitive and were able to construct roads, uh, stadiums, or repair housing. And everybody was happy again. Again, they were listening to information, receiving grants, and uh, experts were teaching us how to become competitive. One by one, gradually, we see new decentralization reform, new vision, 2027 strategy. Back when we were preparing this discussion, probably you knew about the new decrees of the Cabinet of Ministers in July with new fashionable terms and words. On one side, it's positive. From the other side, it's uh, painful. I think recovery is also becoming one of the buzzwords you know, that will be buried under tons of talking, talking, and talking, like the experts keep telling us uh, how should we recover our territories, what their programs would look like, and the communities talk to uh, listen to them, and they say, well, we would be happy in with rebuilding the, the part of the road, or somebody says uh, we would be happy with the school, or somebody says we would be happy with recovering several buildings. So any document would be uh, is supposed to be a reaction on the discussion process and on the uh, regional policy. With uh, gender equality, for example, if we don't say in our strategy that gender equality is one of our priorities, we will not. Uh, we will not receive additional funding. We uh, also say inclusive recovery, although real life, real life people are kind of uh, scared of this word. They like the word exclusive, like an exclusive stadium, an exclusive road. Okay, but if this is the buzzword, we will include this into our document. Inclusive, let it be inclusive. And another third fashionable term, integral development and sustainable development de zones and uh, territories. This was always a question for me, how do we how do we provide sustainable development in the uh, on the Ukrainian level and how is it done on the community level? How do they help each other? So every level, every layer is a new view is a new path when we're saying that in the new legislation there is another important element that every community must have their own strategy of development and they must uh, be aligned with each other there are certain thoughts about the strategy of the communities my colleagues already mentioned this I'd like to ask you if you get to build in the strategy for your communities, will you include tourism? I see how you smile, but the smile is confusing. Uh, when we built the very first strategy of a community development, about a dozen of communities had one had tourism as their key development strategies. We need a road for that, we need a stadium for that, where with the tourists live, we will build another residential complex there so that they live, there. So, you know, where this goes. 
what do I see from these three layers? Three words that characterize the evolution of these trends. First of all, it's change, the ever-changing nature of this. The second word is fashion. We have fashionable buzzwords that come and go, just like uh, clothing, just like slang, just like thoughts sometimes. And number three is monologues. A monologue on the depressive t uh, territories, a monologue on competitiveness. They're expecting to see, to, to, to hear the needs, to listen to the needs covered by with these three fashionable words. In Ukrainian, these all these three buzzwords begin with the same letter, M, which is which looks like a M M M pyramid, which used to be a Ponzi scheme back in Ukraine back in the 1990s. Anyway, that's uh, something for you to think about. Thank you for the retrospection, but let's uh, not throw uh, the uh, bathwater, uh, the, the child together with the bathwater. But there's another question from the audience and Menti. And while you res give your response to this question, I'd like to say the following. Regional politics and regional development in Ukraine in the future will be based not only on uh, reacting on the challenges of the war, but also other out-of-war uh, challenges, change of climate, demographic crisis, potential food crisis and potable water crisis, other problems, whichever the fashion is, there are objective factors that this regional policy should take into account. And meanwhile, we'd like to see on our screen the results All right, let's microphone. All right, so we have now on screen the results of the voting. 13, 18, 17. Well, the question is, which projects, in your opinion, must be the result of a successful regional policy? Big projects of technical infrastructure, uh, sports objects, housing objects, uh, educational facilities, cultural. So the orange ones are technical infrastructure. The yellow bar is uh, the uh, educational facilities. Green is the cultural and sports facilities. 30%. The light blue is uh, the uh, new profile economic facilities objects. And housing is the last bar, the purple bar, which uh, gets 10 votes. Which is the tendency? The centers of economic activity is the highest voted bar because everyone wants to see their regions to be at full capacity, generating added value that can be transformed later for the goods and benefits for the people. For example, opening an industrial park will also depend on the large objects of technical infrastructure because it would need water supply, heat, and all of the communications. In the context of our forum, we cannot forget the housing issue and uh, how, do, how we solve this uh, in, on the regional level. But also I'd like to highlight the importance of sports and educational facilities, which will uh, increase the chances of people staying in this region, not leaving. And uh, little by little, we're moving over to the second block of our panel. There is a question that I would like to discuss after the image uh, pre pre uh, uh, research presented at another urban forum in Lviv. It's called how to communicate the recovery of Ukraine. How? What do the stakeholders say and how this influences the recovery process. This is the research presented at a Lviv Urban Forum. Uh, this work was presented by Otar Dovzhenko. I encourage you to read this research. Um, next slide, next picture. Please pay attention to it because it opens the next block that's called communication. How do we communicate to the public what we're doing? 
This post says the Russians destroyed the Kakhovka Dam. The historians say, wow, uh, the, uh, the big meadow, the new ecological environment. The uh, industrialists say there we have to rebuild the dam. The ecologists uh, are saying their own thing. The black archaeologists are excited about the archaeological items. The agricultural workers are excited and, and worried about the water supply. The uh, military officers are worried about the offensive and the liberating of the territory. The government says there is no time to uh, there is no time to talk. We already have approved the experimental uh, program on renewing the the dam. Let's 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 let's, let's get on to to detailed planning and to the funding. So this screenshot illustrates the complete. Uh, chaos of uh, opinions um, on the same event and uh, let's start with a question what in your opinion can be an effective platform to build an effective regional policy with the stakeholders what should the requirements be it's uh, just a free microphone anyone from the audience can speak let's let me begin First of all, I don't think that such platform should be only one single platform. It should exist on various levels. We've already named the stakeholders, probably we haven't classified them, but they should definitely include the leaders of the communities, associations of the cities of Ukraine, local self-government associations, wherever there's a dialogue and the uh, opportunity to consolidate the vision of the representatives of these of the communities and communicating it to the higher levels this is a platform these are so to speak local platforms because there are district regional administrations there are municip there are municipalities we've already voiced the opinion that our local com councils are have not finished their reforms they are not that points of authority that they were supposed to become after the reform of decentralization but still they are stakeholders they are players and it's important to communicate on the community level on the regional level regional administration so that the regional administration continues this communication by the presidential vertical of accountability. Probably there is a point in organizing platforms between the regions, and the question here is would be would be how to organize them, what what the, that platform would be, who would be the speaker, a voice in the position of the region so that it is reflective and uh, and uh, just in communicating the needs of the reg region. The regions are very different in Ukraine. The, the, the war and the internal and the migration spurred very different problems and tasks in various regions. There is a conflict of interest also because the receiving communities are interested in keeping the IDPs in their communities and the c communities that have suffered are interested in returning their citizens back to their home regions. I know I haven't named the uh, platform, but uh, at least I have described the framework. All right, I'd like to mention, I'd like to give a very brief feedback to, to what you just said, to the two points that you mentioned. The question, what is regional policy for you? For me, the response is one single response. The steps of the government to create conditions. What would be the conditions uh, to achieve the aim? For example, to raise the standards in a certain region or to raise general standards of living. Example, when Cherkasy region sees rivalry, when Kyiv, ivano frankivsk or Ternopil or Lviv will be full-fledged rivals of Kyiv, will be the 
the point of attraction for people from Kyiv. This is real competition between the regions, the competition for citizens, social projects, business, and so on. For that, we need communication platforms. That's inter-level and inter-community platforms. We need to launch a, a discussion, a communication between the communities of the communities and the region, between the regions, between the regions as a level and the nationwide layer. So we need to understand the specifics of the, of the time we, uh, we, we have to act. We have to act during. There are communities that are local self-government in their communities that represent military administrations. These are two completely different cases. There are very understand, very clear verticals of accountability. There are many municipal military administrations that belong to one type of uh, vertical, and the local self-government belong to a completely different one. It works differently in different parts of Ukraine. So the more platform, platforms we have, uh, like the Urban Forum in Vinitsa or in a working group on the city planning code. I can see many of the participants of those uh, working events here, and we know your weekly feedback. The more people come from the communities suggesting their own ideas, if there's an open platform, the better it will be. Victoria, I'd like to mention several things from my practice, from what I've seen, and from what you've mentioned in the first layer. There are several, there are certain uh, capable, active communities. They are not waiting uh, for any uh, recommendations from above. Uh, they communicate at platforms like these, they build horizontal and vertical cooperation. But these proactive communities are only 10% in Ukraine. One, 1,400 communities and only 10% of them are uh, such proactive ones. For example, we had 5 million of the deficit of the dotation leveling up. Taking into account these uh, years of war, we have already attracted f another four sources of uh, funding from the budget if you're saying we need to be uh, to be uh, competitive for human resources uh, with other regions we are already we go to forums we're looking for experts there who are not sure where to implement their uh, initiatives we give them a place to to launch them will the regional policy help or assist in other way no there will be always their runners up there will be always trying to join this process they are still waiting still waiting until that plan is built and the money follows the plan there's no unique plan that ensures an influx of money tomorrow so the best advice for the communities is to be proactive to take initiative to participate in various forums, event. I'm always jealous of uh, people who participate. You know, I would like to be everywhere at the same time. But um, only initiative is uh, the key to success. We shouldn't be waiting for a special invitation. We need to take initiatives by ourselves and communicate what we're doing and what we need. We had a great um, bar chart. We need to decide which are the most prioritized parts of our regional uh, policy. In the Mykolaiv region, for example, there is still no solid waste management program. This is where we, and this is the basics to have uh, the original and the community program for us, for the infrastructure that is supposed to be created in Vosnesensk as well. So the, re the uh, regions must understand where they hold the leadership, create the platforms according to these uh, directions of leadership. So there have to be like, topical 
uh, thematic groups of people united by, by by the same issue, by solving the same issue, and base their planning on the resource they already have, not on the potential funding. The plans have to be generated to be aligned with the realistic resources. That's what will make the, communi the, the, the community and the regional level improvement much better. Okay, another thing I wanted to point out, Constantine made me realize that the platforms and the formats of these platforms uh, will depend a lot, it must depend on uh, on the s speed of action that reality, uh, reality demands from us. If there is an issue that calls for immediate action, it's working groups and maybe round tables. If we're talking about strategic level tasks and midterm tasks, then probably we should talk about the uh, detailed in-depth consultations, discussions, all of the pros and cons to to arrive at more stable, sustainable decisions in the long run. Alexandra mentioned at the very beginning that part of uh, the regional development um, fund and uh, voting in DIA, this shouldn't be just uh, a, a thing in the, the, in the vacuum, a separate thing. We need to take into account the needs of the local citizens. We have another 10 minutes. But we can stay longer. And my question is for the organizers now. Uh, will we have another round of questions and answers, or should we open the questions for the uh, audience? OK, let us now, yeah, while you are preparing your questions, let us post uh, the, uh, display Mentimeter question. I was very pleased to see the results of voting in chat as one PDF. It's cool. So who should participate in formulation of regional policies? We're talking about stakeholders. In your opinion, who should be <laughs> involved? Yeah, that's yesterday, garage for sale. Now we have the first response related to that. While you are at this, I would like to ask Olena to take a mic and find people willing to ask questions. Now? Yeah. Uh, let me know who would like four questions, yeah? So let's proceed from that, yeah? How many questions we have, yeah? Please introduce yourself. Igor from Vinitsa. My question is that we had a very powerful organi program of the European Union a standard development uh, mode for the communities, but I have not heard about it later, lately. Yeah, Konstantin probably can answer that. Was it archived? It's difficult to answer. A smart development, of course, is very popular. So probably it was not covered with earth, not buried yet. We would all like to have smart cities now, but smart has two sides of a coin. First is efficiency of management, and it's the same tool that was um, uh, legis uh, legislated, and it's now in the law. But on the other hand, this behind this smart, we forget about a stereotype uh, when uh, we just uh, enter some data into a computer and then we receive a step-by-step -step algorithm. Unfortunately, it does not work this way. Smart approach, I hope it will stay. But in the hands of each individual community, we should see how efficiently they will use it. So, but there should be a beginning and a deadline here. I think that there is a lot of abuse of this key uh, words. Uh, smart means strategic, means strategic, measurable, uh, relevant, and uh, time-bound. So the, it refers to 
viable projects that can be implemented by a community. Yeah, let's not forget about that. Please introduce yourself. My name is Hanna Pavlenko from NGO Nova Drushkivka from Donetsk Oblast. First of all, I would like to thank Victoria so much for her presentation. I see that she has a very clear vision of what the challenges that the communities encountered in the recovery process. And in the Donetsk region uh, today, I can see that the communities are not able to develop any recovery plans because the number of staff members and local self-government bodies is now five times lower. Oh, they used to have 200, now they have 40, and they look at us with such big eyes at us when we come to visit them. They say it's so scary, it's so terrible here, go back, why did you come? So they are working under so much stress that they are not able to think about development, and they have such great fear that they can be occupied and that they will have to leave. Um, so these two months for recovery in our communities, it's unimaginable. And here you have to involve a lot of expertise and give them more time. And the second problem here is that the communities are still shelled. And as in the beginning, and now this shelling is constant with a certain degree of regularity. And they cannot plan. They do not have this understanding of the damage that will be inflicted and how long it will take people to come back because more and more people say that they're not going to come back. Thank you. If you can, uh, if you can allow me, not continuing your idea, but uh, continuing your yesterday's uh, speech before the beginning of active hostilities, we visited a lot of places in um, Donetsk region, we visited Druzhkivka, and we learned about local initiatives. Regional policy just creates conditions, but it's up to the community whether they will create something, whether Druzhkivka will implement a micro project, or Dorbrapilla will create something in an empty space. And if that is combined, then we will have some result. But if we have something coming from the top, some strategic document, it will envisage a mandatory development of tourism, roads, stadium, and so on. But that will be it. But the effect, but the result, yeah, doesn't mean that the community will comply with the strategy. Ivan and then Elena, two points. Apparently, we have to take into account that there are communities close to the contact line. They will not be able to participate in development of national policies. And the second point I wanted to make, that when we develop a national regional policy, we have to take into consideration the fact that uh, the results of this war Whenever we wherever we have this contact land, we will have a huge depopulated areas. Yeah, Olena, next question, please. Thank you, Polo Serotka from Lviv. I would like to respond a little bit to uh, the previous questions on the Mentimeter. The result of the regional policy should be a project. For instance, we constructed a road or a stadium, or we created a new business, whatever was mentioned there. Here, I think it was mentioned already that the result should not be a project, but a communication platform that will enable various communities to com communicate. For instance, if we construct a road, we bring together 10 communities. If we construct a stadium, we bring together five other communities. And the objective of regional policy should be, be to become this platform uh, that should be some financial limitation. For instance, we have 10 million. You can select what you can do with this 10 million because all roads, all 
stadiums, all shelters will require several billion of grimnas for per, per village. Of course, this program can become a menu from which you can pick. But if this menu is as long as a, yeah, as a cash receipt, then nobody will use it. Yeah, I will let my colleagues comment on them too. But which of these projects can be the result of the regional policy? That was the question. Because according to the recent resolutions of the cabinet, uh, there is a plan for recovery of regions that has to be developed. And that also has a list of recovery projects attached to it. So this is a cross-cutting issue. Yeah, First, Alexandra, could you comment how not how to avoid this list becoming a menu and how can you make this policy a platform for discussion as a result of which the communities will not only have a vision but a specific point that will they will have to implement uh, within the framework of regional policy I am also a little bit triggered by the formulation because for me projects are tools for achieving a goal and the result of policy should be achievement of identified goals and for me it would be more interesting to talk about the goals of regional policies taking into consideration the realities of wartime and post-war time i hope that will come very soon and we should remember that the traditional goals of regional policies worldwide in the European Union is balanced development of territories so that the citizens do not migrate from one region to another so that we do not have these depopulated areas. Our depopulated areas will be a result of hostilities, but without that we will also have regions uh, from which people go to other regions. So we have this very strong regionalism when regions are very very much isolated and when you ask people who, who you identify as then people say that I'm a citizen of Donbass or I'm a citizen of Odessa and, Odessa and then they say that I'm a Ukrainian so this is not a problem of social economic development that's a problem of social uh, of national unity and this should also be answered by regional policy yeah, last but, but one question. Yeah, I will take five minutes of your break. Yeah, very briefly. Anatoly Litvinov, Vinitsa, architect and urban developer. First of all, I would like to mention that I like this discussion and I would like to mention that the question was formulated in a very correct way. We do not have regional policy, so this discussion demonstrates that the regional policy is absent because we do not have regions. Uh, the notion of region is not defined at a legis legislative level and this region, the concept as, as a concept uh, each regions were trying to pull the blanket and that uh, undermined the unity of the state and the state development as such so at a legislative level we have a program or a regulation i don't remember it now at a legislative level we do not have a definition of regionalism regions regions were determined at the ethnographic level like Podilia, Slobozhanshina and so on or regions were determined defined at a political level like western southern regions so which regions are we talking about for which regions are we going to develop the programs and who will implement them even if we talk about ethnographic and geographic level, we are talking about Podilia, for instance. It cover it includes three big cities. Yeah, can you ask a question? Yeah. So these regions, Khvinitsa, Khmelnytsky, and Trivne, or Lutsk, 
they are leaders in the region and so they will develop the projects or are supposed to develop the projects and implement these projects because there are no other implementers. Yes, so the question was about how the regions are defined. Yeah, I'll try to answer very briefly. I disagree that we do not have regions at a legislative level. We have 27 regions. Nobody ever canceled that. And in the new legislative initiatives, they introduced the notions of macro region and micro region. So uh, several oblasts in Podilla can come together to develop various programs. The regional policy, it does exist. Its efficiency it is a question. And we all together uh, will try to figure out how to make it efficient. And we are very grateful to the organizers for raising this question. So how we make sh do we make sure that it, this policy is efficiency? But the performance indicators as KPIs, now, they need to be defined, yes. Thank you. Okay, colleagues, if you don't have anything to add, I will not uh, repeat uh, the summary, but I will mention several key points. We have to create platforms for cross-cutting communication, uh, including all relevant stakeholders, and uh, we will never create ideal conditions for development of an ideal strategy because everybody has different starting points. So I suggest we thank our panelists for today. But Konstantin wanted to make one comment. I'm so sorry. So I mentioned this MMM pyramid, and in the end, I would like to destroy it. Monologues can be turned into dialogues, and we have a dialogue today. We are listening to one another, and we hope that it will be expanded. So a trend should be turned into pragmatism, and we should not just devise new notions, but ensure that they have positive impact on the population and the, this fluidity should stay, let us change, and we can do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are very grateful to the speakers, to Alexander for being the moderator of this wonderful discussion. We have a break now until 3 o'clock, so you can go outside, take some coffee, snacks, and in 25 minutes we will...
colleagues take convenient seats in the audience. I invite you to continue our program, especially I would like to ask people who are near the coffee break, please find possibility to finalize a conversation and join the audience. One minute and we're about to start our discussion. Friends, I welcome you to the audience. We are waiting for just half a minute and we are going to start. We're going to have the discussion now called uh, Planning City for Living. It will be moderated by Natalia Trishna, sociologist, researcher, scientific uh, worker of uh, Municipal History Center located in Lviv. Natalia, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much. Please uh, take your seats as we are going to uh, start our last uh, discussion in the agenda of Urban Forum also space to orient ourselves in the area and to dream about the future, to reflect on the future city, future women plan now in the point of indefiniteness, which is the full-scale war in Ukraine. At the same time, this is the place where we may dream, dream like utopists, dream like radicals, and where we may suggest different uh, tools and possibilities uh, for the joint future we're about to build and who are we in this uh, story who do we include who do we do not include we're going to speak about planning as a vision it means some vision of future we would like to achieve together we are also going to speak about specific practices and uh, instruments as the picture which is unreachable uh, instead of mobilizing will be and define even more and to think of some specific steps and uh, tools by which we may uh, move to this uh, joint future. Natalia Kondal Perminova participates in this uh, discussion with us, Yuri Stalerov, Alexandra Narizhna, and Sergei Yekivchuk. I will represent in more detail each one of them during the first round of discussion. The screen is off. I guess this is how it should be like, yeah? And our plan is uh, that we're going to have three rounds of discussion. If we keep with the uh, uh, time, if no, only two, let us uh, go for three. I hope also, like other discussions, we plan your involvement via my team tool. Please respond to the questions before every round of conversation. I would like also us to open the field for conversation and the mic to go into audience so you may respond or to comment on what you hear in this conversation. May I ask you please to show first question on screen. This is a question with uh, multiple choice answers. Please open your phones and look at the options we suggest. Of course, you may enter the patron as your own option. We had it on screen previous time, but let us be more serious about this space as soon. All of that will be the summary of form and made public. While we, us, I use this plural from not like nothing. I would like to unpack first us, people who work on developing new edition, the only edition on city development code, uh, Ms. Condal, uh, Deputy Institute of Architecture Construction 
um, matters of National Institute of Ukraine. She is uh, within the Working uh, Council on the Municipal Development of Ukraine. Please orient ourselves where we are at. Please uh, round the circle. Who are we working on the policies, which are the policies, and city planning and urban development? I may start, yeah? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank for being invited to this powerful, fantastic urban forum. I would like to thank our foreign partners who at that um, difficult and decisive time for Ukraine provide us with priceless assistance and support, in particular in organizing this powerful communication platform. Now, questions. Where we are at, I would like to ask you to show the uh, scheme a bit later, a couple of uh, four words. First, we are in a real historical situation. What does it mean? It means that at some point, at some moment, two different uh, time spaces or poles are focused. First is the actual reality. We understand it very well. This is what we are speaking about, like the topical issues that need to be resolved of the existence of people here and now. And the second pole, important. What matters? It means necessity of lengthy strategic programming, project designing, what outlines our future that we may not move on without in future uh, and should do specific steps now. This is my first statement. Second statement I would like to say from the standpoint of all the generation. I'm very pleased to see lots of young people who work hard. Uh, generation of heroes because uh, your destiny and you are facing big problems. Now uh, our reality is that we are facing paradigm change. This is really a historical event where we need to make this transition from the Soviet administrative planning system that was uh, clearly structured, centralized and was oriented toward planning from what has been achieved. It was state party government policy and thinking of many generations was formed based on that policy. Clear, it is difficult to overcome. And now we have a transition from the Soviet paradigm to the paradigm of contemporary integrated development of cities. This is where we are located. This is my um, set up. This is my uh, graph, schematizing work group activity on developing city development code. I will explain. There are two months from meetings and this graph uh, focuses on content, who works on what and what we plan to receive, what we see as our future. This is spatial um, picture, this is multidimensional, like conventional uh, display of spaces of work group activities. Lower level, our situation here and now, you see the past of Ukraine, the future and setting that the past is not good for us. If we do not work, uh, plan, uh, be strategic about the future, we will get the past that we used to have. I know this critical uh, defining point at war, uh, people are injured, uh, losing power, clear. And in this space here now, this work is unfolded. Second layer is specialists in different areas who have arrived to the next communication um, space to discuss the future city. Um, construction code of Ukraine based on other principles and it is built the way that representatives of five are included in this space. Five stakeholders noted here, people, inhabitants, uh, second specialist business, uh, local uh, governments and the 
central government. I may not show all the reflection ahead, but just imagine. You may imagine it as palm, five stakeholders, and all four take care about inhabitants. As a result of discussions, we have one more stakeholder added, nature, as the subject, the participant of this uh, process. This activity continues based on some schemes, and we have uh, the dashboard of reflection, but all the developments, all discussions are not just left like that, but every time we systematize and elaborate on content, which is made public, which is broadcasted, it is visualized, and we may use. This is the point of communication when nothing disappears, when it is set and fixed, and at the joint uh, dashboard uh, space of thinking it is uh, recorded uh, the next layer is what we are going through first we went through is analyzing situation we were discussing the situation of urbanizing ukraine second demographic matters many issues relating to situation now then uh, thematizing we're discussing what is code code is on the level of law constitution that uh, should be the main document of our uh, urban development space, which is realized much broader than just cities. We uh, understand just the system of the spatial development of the whole Ukraine. And you see, we prioritize name uh, urban uh, development. We have 14 uh, options for the city development code. We went through analyzing and reflection. Next, we're discussing the city planning, state of play, uh, what it's like now, and where do we have urgent, uh, immediate needs. Uh, next, uh, designing, putting into operation, and using the housing. Uh, in a month, we are going to discuss international experience, the way the housing codes in other countries are composed, and we uh, would like to receive at the summary the concept of the code, which at the next level will uh, be transferred to national legislation, and the specialists are going to translate it into legal language. We have a huge library where all of that is accumulated, everything is accessible and work within Ukraine, Europe, and the world. Thank you. My time is up. Thank you so much, uh, Natalia, for this introductory field to show the way the activity is done, based on which developments. And now we are going to speak about points of immediate needs, where we have um, the fire that needs to be extinguished, so to say. I admit that not everything is bad. We have some uh, development that we may potentially dwell on. We shouldn't invent everything from scratch. And this is the issue we face all the time, trying to reinvent from scratch every time, uh, going through the same layers. So points where we have a fire and the points where we may build on, I would like to speak with colleagues, and we're going down to local level. We were discussing the development of municipal development code on state level. We are going to discuss now different local contexts. I would like to invite Yuri Skolinov, uh, main architect of Dipromista, uh, urban uh, developer planner, who may speak based on his professional experience, working institutions for a long time, which also inherited certain planning practices, but that was adapted within the last 30 years for new um, conditions and circumstances. Please, Yuri. Um, uh, actually, it's called uh, Mr. Project. That's uh, an independent state institution now, uh, which is occupied in city building activities in the western part of Ukraine. And uh, where we are now, okay, that's a very decisive point where we should think about strategies, but at the same time, uh, we sometimes have to take really fast decisions. We, so we should be very careful to do the right thing and avoid mistakes. 
Uh, so I see that our audience, the majority of our audience, including me, uh, when we were voting to answer the question, uh, we see that local experts and local communities are responsible for these policies in Ukraine. Uh, but now the situation is that uh, actually these local stakeholders, uh, local authorities, local communities and experts, they should be responsible. But in practice, uh, we see that the legislature uh, in terms of legislation, regional authorities have more value. And uh, at the local level, the, they now have uh, limited opportunities to influence the policies. And I, as a designer of uh, some documentation, feel it so much. We had a very good start of decentralization and to have uh, great hopes. But uh, for the past two years, we've seen some falling back. It uh, seems that local authorities have a lot of power, but in practice, in practice they uh, don't seem to have uh, influence over uh, forming the architecture of their region or set some demands or influence uh, uh, some introduction of local historical or cultural limitations or peculiarities of life in this uh, location. Uh, because the regional authorities have their list set and local authorities are left with very limited scale of opportunities. Of course, they have their instruments such as city building documentation, but the practice shows that whatever good things you put into this documentation, uh, only two points are later used. These are the uh, height of buildings and density. All our green solutions, all, uh, our attempts to take into account climate change or transport, it, it's only on the paper and then it goes to archives as uh, the previous panel member remembered, and we only take it from the archive when we need to identify the height and density. Well, uh, the region says use all your instruments, but it doesn't work. All controlling bodies from uh, prosecutor office to other uh, bodies, they only take into account these two points, which limits our uh, space for forming a good policy. So we really hope to have a good new code where uh, the influence on policies will be more balanced and uh, more proportionate between the central and local administrations, communities. And the next point, uh, it's uh, about finances, because the development of our regions, cities and towns is connected with finances throughout the history of architecture and cities, we see that the development started only uh, with the Industrial Revolution when we started gaining taxes, budgets, and uh, the finances to build our cities. Before that, they were only some sacred buildings and palaces of nobility. Uh, because they were the stakeholders, religion and nobility. So 
uh, we also should somehow connect finances and city building policies because they cannot work in isolation. And another thing I wanted to say is about fast solutions and strategies. Okay, uh, please uh, remember that fix it will be talking about it. Just a few words. It's about statistics. We actually need it so much on all levels because we don't have enough statistics and everything we have is not good enough. Later I'll be talking more about it, but this uh, point is something that slows us and uh, it can result in some wrong decisions. Thank you. I take it down about the reality of documents and practices, and I also put it down the need to see the money, the finances in this story, to see the money flow, cash flow, because it's something that our solutions depend on, and uh, something we've been talking about that's data. We need to base our decisions on data, but who collects the data, how it is collected, and uh, when we set the, the uh, task at the beginning of collecting data is also not quite clear. And now we are moving to Kharkiv, and I'd like to give the floor to Alexandra, urbanist, uh, member of Urban Refor uh, Reform organization which works with uh, spatial decisions now and implements participative planning through public uh, spaces and she is also in informal education she works in ukraine and the netherlands alexandra please share your perspective uh, good afternoon. Thank you for your invitation to this interesting discussion. I'd like to start from the bottom and uh, share uh, our vision. I represent a public sector and we often have different perspectives at what is going on. Uh, to begin with, I don't like the word uh, city building. I'll try to avoid it, but uh, there is this word so far, I hope. Okay. Uh, uh, because uh, in around the world they don't have this term, so maybe it's our uh, Soviet uh, legacy. So what our city development is based on, that's data research. This is our basis for local authorities to understand what they need, what they have. Uh, so here we must think about communication, data, and all the basic things. In general, I'd like to touch the two large points. Uh, uh, such as market and education. So how does our market work? We have several stakeholders, our state, which sets the rules of the game. And uh, uh, we know that we have the order, what goes first, what goes next. First we have the plan, then the strategy, because we need the plan right now. Then we design the program and after that the plan. So we've lost something, whether the plan is still uh, timely. So there are many questions. But that's a life process for Ukraine. We're young, we're changing fast. and. Uh, it can be a, a solution for us being experimentative. So it's uh, uh, more like on the positive side that we are working and not waiting. Of course, there are uh, oblast and regional councils which play their role, which is sometimes changing and a little bit vague. It, uh, it is partially, the role is partially controlling. They have some uh, authorities, but mostly they control. And, uh, of course, our stakeholders are local authorities, and I think they are very regulated from the upper level because uh, they get from the government some regulations, and they don't have either expertise or possibility to uh, judge better. And in my opinion, here we have very good examples 
example, from the Netherlands, they get, got rid of any regulations from the top, and every municipality designed their own documents and set their own tasks uh, how to make their city develop better. It's an, an alternative position. Uh, we aren't ready for that. We uh, need an expertise for that. But uh, it's also a focus where we can move the direction. And uh, we should remember that local authorities having these directions from above, uh, they often work just formally and uh, their um, ideas are not practical. So, of course, our local authorities have to balance be between these government formalities, formalities and working with donors, international best practices and expertise. It's very difficult because uh, they don't uh, come together. And there are two more stakeholders. Uh, they are project institutions. They can be private, state, and uh, so-called uh, that's uh, like me, uh, like new urbanists uh, emerging, have been emerging since uh, the beginning of uh, the uh, 2000, and in our community, uh, we are like that. So these two universes, project institutions and new urbanists, they just do not see each other. They are like two different planets and there is no communication between them. Project institutions play their games with the Prozora market and they just uh, implement the task uh, and uh, uh, use in Prozora what they get from the government. But we, as new urbanists, we work with donors, US policies, new approaches, but our documents are not official, are not formal. And this new generation turns to the government. That's what we were talking about yesterday. So we are going to the state and offer the new policies. So these circles of cooperation, they exist but don't uh, interconnect, interlap. And we hope it's going to change and we need a dialogue for that. Also, we have some lack of uh, uh, staff and like deficit for qualified personnel. That's true for both uh, project institutions and for us. So we lack experienced people and guarantees because, uh, for example, if we have students who study to be urban specialists, uh, what a they will have jobs. What? Where will they go? If we work with uh, future IT specialists, we need to guarantee that these people will have employment. But on the other hand, we must make sure that we have a market for that. It's developing, but we need it stable and big enough. If we come back to education, we see a lot of graduates. I know the standards in education, talking about architecture, and if we follow these standards, we will never get a good specialist. We have to re-teach these graduates. And sometimes it's even better to start from the scratch than try to re educate the specialists after the university. So there's a question, a question arises, what books we use? What, uh, what is our basic line? Where do we start from? And the last thing I wanted to say is about the product that project institutions and new urbanists produce. It, can, it must be transparent, understandable, that's clear. But the main point is for this product, 
if we don't want to be uh, like uh, in 1970s uh, to discuss something and uh, get nothing. Uh, so when now we make a project and don't have uh, anyone to discuss it with, it's taken to the expertise, uh, it's signed or it is not, but no one sees it. So when starts discussing our projects, we need to look for best formats, best decisions. So the last point is implementation. You already started answering the question of what to do next. Let's finish this first round, and I feel that later we can uh, combine these two rounds into one to include the audience. So the audience, please remember your questions. And now I'll give the floor to Sergei, uh, the architecture, the specialist of spatial uh, um, development. He's from Vinnytsia, we are his guest. So please, from the perspective of Vinnytsia, from your perspective of knowing the NGO point of view and uh, the state point of view, tell about what we've been talking about. Um, maybe about this uh, different kinds of financing, everything you think. Okay, it resonated with me when um, you said about blogger Usti, and I thought how to translate that word because it's so specific and it doesn't exist in other languages. So uh, in order to understand where we are, well, we are in Vinitsa, yes, but where we, the residents of Vinitsa, are standing now, uh, to understand that, I'd like to say that we are in a long transition period because uh, before the war we've had a lot of changes and reforms and the decentralization which is uh, frozen now and uh, we don't the situation with the city building documentation and so this uh, topic is so specific, we know how effective the general plans are and we have spatial limitations which do not give us any aims, any objectives. And parallel to that, we have different uh, um, all kinds of informal documentation, uh, some uh, things that are used abroad, like strategic plans, uh, which are now developed by different cities, and they have aims and visions for their cities and some set tasks to uh, reach those aims. and. Uh, so this informal documentation that helps us to uh, in this transition in this long transition moment where we need to systemize all the knowledge and tools understand uh, which tools are effective and which are not because as of now we have to do a very difficult work with uh, some Mm, like uh, abuses of rules in different areas because we have these illegal buildings. It's also an interesting topic for discussion. For example, in Vinitsa, we have this river. We are very proud of this precious area, but no one understands how to regulate the land along this river. And we have a lot of illegal constructions along the river. There are simple case, uh, cases, and no one knows how to stop that. Of course, there are some fines, but uh, the situation is uh, getting worse. And we have this um, 
moment, transitional, pretty long, and the war overcomplicated this even more. The war brought up other issues because this is crisis of residential sector. The topic of our today's uh, yesterday's forum, joint home, and the issue of uh, residential um, stock. Uh, Part of it is destroyed, how to provide people with housing, quality housing. Um, there are issues uh, about quality of housing before, and now it is even bigger issue. Uh, first um, important is uh, speed and only then quality, and it will be even bigger issue with time, um, duration of housing, uh, space uh, quality. Uh, we know that our state construction norms at the bands, one of the regulatory documents that all the urban development documents based on, have many shortcomings. Uh, and they are also in transition period. So I have outlined all of that as a transition process. We are within the lengthy transition period, and the war just complicated all of that. Thank you so much. If you may please show the results of our survey, and we will uh, move to the second uh, round that I will combine with the third uh, circle, if you allow. Future is never empty. It is always colonized by what we used to have and by what we have now. We will never get there like in a um, blank uh, sheet of paper. We have some expectations, we have some realities, and I hope that this um, round of discussion forms some lines of tensions, but also some opportunities we may build on. And it is very indicative that our audience is giving so many rights and possibilities to local communities and local expert um, groups, and we see uh, here a line for discussing uh, this forum, a uh, line of empowering uh, local communities and um, urban um, areas. Uh, as Alexander was mentioned, I would like to talk with you about where we are moving to. What is our wish in um, improving policies in urban development uh, in the country of Ukraine, and what steps we may do to approximate this better future, what practices we may uh, multiply, and to you, dear audience, I also have some questions. If you please may uh, display the next question, I will refer here to a quotation that I have seen recently to the new urban conditions, uh, criticisms of architecture and urban development. A photo was there from Santiago, uh, Chile, where Matias Segura, Virgil uh, Painter, showed a text that I will translate from Spanish, something like, we will not get back to normal because normal was a problem. We are probably in some problematic area that I don't want to see only as a problem again. But I'm mm, quoting this saying from Santiago City, not just to say it, uh, because I'm interested to see your response. Who do you look at and what do you look at? Because to imagine future, we require certain models we may build on. So I will probably change the order and ask you, Sergei, to start, and then we are going to move. It is a very interesting thing that we had here. When the voting started, uh, good that first was Lviv, then Leipzig, uh, Zurich. It's, this, it is because, yeah, Lviv is a great example to follow. And uh, now, um, pretty good expert community that we go for assistance, uh, communicate closely with architects, urban developers from Lviv. Yes, and if we speak about practices, practices of other cities, models to follow, this is probably the uh, comprehensive matter, because we know that every city um, has got uh, advantages and disadvantages in working with space, working is the urban development area, and I was very surprised by a story when our delegation went from Vinica to Norway. They have a practice there where municipality organizes visit for the first grade of school, and they learn their lesson topic is the way a municipality operates, and they learn 
during several seances, so to say some basic things, which is very um, important point as a practice of um, upbringing uh, client. We as um, executives, as uh, those who serve a city, a design city, there are people on the other side who use this and uh, we understand that we need to uh, improve the quality of this client we understand the high the quality of the client the professional community is going to grow better sometimes people don't give a uh, thought about impact on city uh, do they buy an uh, apartment from the um, developer who provides necessary functions not only to meet their needs, but the needs for the municipality. Uh, they don't think about outside spaces. They do not understand that they're going to be using not only apartment, but the space in the city. And one of the important points, I would um, say that this is bringing up this target audience, bringing up clients, what Alexandra was mentioning. Ale education should be not only uh, vocational, it should be from the for the outside for us to shape the client who uses uh, the city thank you so education is a, a great uh, area that we need to study in different ways we're speaking about vocational education in the urban development city planning and architecture also about broader competence as you have formulated the um, quality of client, I would say more that we need to work on um, bringing new practices to this area, new uh, uh, lexic, and maybe new um, decisions we made. Alexander, you started answering a little to the question what to do, but where should we move to? What is the optimum area, in your opinion? I will repeat uh, a little. Definitely, it's making less regulation in uh, activity where we regulate everything that may be compared to bringing up a child. A child's got all the clear rules uh, what to do. A child does not have critical thinking, what I want to do and what else can I do. So we need, in my opinion, to have uh, less pressure on local authorities in terms of mandatory regulation, what they should do, because this provokes a formal approach. And in my opinion, it entails many difficulties and uh, just cuts uh, short creativity for people. On the other hand, uh, definitely improving qualification, enhancing qualification in the professional area of executives, also in the area of uh, uh, customers, local administration, because we do not have the circle of professional uh, customers uh, formed who may clearly set the uh, question to formulate the demand. Uh, formulating the request is uh, also very important, like the implementation, and those two uh, sides should be professional. Definitely higher education and new standards for higher education. We need to delineate architecture from urban planning. Those are delineated, but urban planning is doing different things. We have the urban development, urban planning. We need to uh, um, resolve those unclarities. We have the landscaping, landscape planning when we uh, design space areas, uh, greenery, uh, urban planning, urbanism, uh, different names in European um, context. We should uh, come up with normal architecture that shouldn't imitate uh, city uh, planning. Uh, focusing on sustainability and quality. We need to separate all of that a little. I think that we need to form one market understandable for all, how we cooperate with each other and not like we do not uh, notice each other and pretend that this is uh, like it should be like. I think that super important point for us is cooperation. When we start cooperating between ourselves, cooperating, 
uh, with European, American, any partners when our projects will not uh, at the outcome be a project of one organization because uh, this is um, not good uh, for European and advanced world and the uh, result uh, one organization cannot uh, cover all the uh, matters. KCIP cannot just issue the project having no partners in landscaping, uh, business partners, and so on and so forth. This is joint project, and every product created in European space is a partner product. It's not the product of one organization. Here, this partnership does not function, and we need to learn to cooperate with European specialists because we have very little percent of people in the industry that may uh, support dialogue in uh, general. If you take a comprehensive uh, urban development uh, area here and European uh, area, we speak different languages. Our specialists will not understand one another. We need uh, to start, so to say, setting up those uh, connections. And I think that it will be a symbolic event when Dnipro uh, Mista will win the tender for master plan of Bosa. I mean to say that when our specialists are going to be up to date and ready to work in European space, when European space is going to become European space, we'll not invent something but be able to teach Europeans uh, with our um, achievements. Now we may teach them our approaches, our creativity to do something, but when we become uh, good weight uh, professionals, this is going to be probably an important stage. I think this is um, it, idea about expertise transfer, how it is moving, the West moving toward East, or are we based on some other geography? I was so inspired by this um, quotation um, of Chile because we uh, tend to see um, some geographies and do not see other geographies, sometimes to learn, but sometimes also to suggest our own uh, uh, solutions. Uh, of course, we need to learn, but we're speaking about balance relationship between expert communities, among others also uh, educational uh, communities, but we're speaking about um, capabilities, um, potential, and resources. Let me add uh, one last phrase. Of course, participation, involvement, I may forget, uh, because it's normal for me, that's only the way we work, of course, involvement, cooperation, and uh, results which are elaborated, so to say, should be made public for uh, general population. Many people speak about participation, about uh, involving people, but even when people are involved, and what's next? Okay, people participate and they, they need to know what are the results, what is the process to know all the stages of the process, not to be involved only in the meeting, but to be involved in all the process. This cooperation also means uh, cooperation with communities, cooperation with people, different poles in urban planning, cooperation with uh, the state. We need to learn this cooperation in Ukraine, and I think that this is one of the important focuses. Where is the expertise? Is it just in the plane of professionals, or is it also in other planes? And can we see those planes and to interact with them uh, um, substantially? Yuri, I think you also had comment. I hope you remember it. If it is um, uh, topical at this point, what is your ideal picture and how can we approximate it? My perfect picture of where we are going to. Uh, at different conferences, we use such words as um, sustainability, people oriented, but uh, people sometimes give uh, more s simple answers, and we can see some of them on our screens. So, people uh, look at different cities which are comfortable to live, nice to live. People uh, may not know what sustainability is, but feel comfortable in Vienna or another city. And uh, I'm so pleased to see Lviv uh, on this list. Uh, 
that's uh, so nice, but it's good that it's not the leader, uh, because otherwise I would have nothing to do in my city and I wouldn't have uh, my job. Okay, so in our Ukrainian context, we try to um, aim at European cities, their models of development, and it is also set in our constitution. Uh, and uh, people like it, they want it, and the state declares it. So I think that uh, when developing our regulations and documents, we should also be oriented at Western uh, templates and examples. Of course, it's not just copy-pasting, but uh, we can use the best uh, norms uh, from European practice. That's just um, a reply. What I think is important in future, uh, I believe, and I think the majority of uh, our audience also believe that, that strong municipalities, strong communities, financially independent communities that have enough tools and resources to manage their development, only they can take Ukraine forward and change yeah, for better the life of an average Ukrainian and the situation when uh, Ukrainians uh, don't think about how they can go abroad. They will only think how to come back to Ukraine. In my uh, view, the central state bodies uh, can retain their uh, like monitoring function uh, on the level of complying with uh, uh, legislation with the, like environmental regulations and other things and uh, in context of how people need to live in their communities is up to them. It's not okay where in uh, a town we're building some gym at uh, the finances of uh, the state or the ministry. I think that local budgets should have enough money, uh, substantial part of uh, taxes, and because it's not okay when a plant works in one city but is registered in another region and the taxes go there. The reforms in urban city building legislation must be supported by reforms in taxation legislation. The next point is open data. Ukraine is moving forward in that direction, but I see that we have a lot of data, but uh, this data is not organized and not user-friendly. We should have uh, registers where people can easily find uh, information to be used for fast decision-making. In Lviv, we more or less have that, but in other towns and cities, we practically have nothing. And the uh, state uh, has a large amount of data which is not user-friendly for city planners. You can find information on some specific object, but you can't find some statistics on a town or region but it shouldn't be very difficult to make because uh, we have this uh, geolocalization, uh, so it should be easy to organize all the data. Now we have to spend a lot of time. Uh, we spent months and years to uh, find everything we need, but in information changes in the course of time. Okay, talking about education, yes, uh, we 
have this deficit, uh, uh, but uh, it's more about uh, planning bodies, not designers. Uh, people um, don't want to go there because salaries are low and uh, bodies which take part in planning the city and develop and designing its development. Uh, we need to have uh, qualified people and to offer them good salaries and incentives. So people who work there now are engaged in so-called firefighting and they don't have enough time to think about strategy. In larger cities maybe they have uh, enough personnel and they can afford uh, to set uh, a few people to think about strategies. But in smaller communities they are only busy writing some reports and they don't have resource to think about strategies. Then, uh, as long as we are talking about the future, what can be set in our code is uh, that we must change a lot of uh, points about land. If we are talking about rebuilding our towns and cities, our land code is very limited. I think in many towns, especially ruined ones, critically ruined, uh, there is no sense to rebuild uh, some building on the ruins, it will slow us. And what slows us is the property for land. Uh, when we have a very complicated process of uh, uh, defining the land, uh, its ownership, the mechanism is not well defined in our legislation and we have uh, uh, court cases uh, and very often municipality loses these cases and doesn't have uh, the opportunity to implement uh, some projects. So if we take uh, the current situation, we can't change anything radically uh, until we have changes in our land code. So it needs to be adjusted in the context of what is in store for us. Okay, and let's come back. Uh, we are coming back to the level of codes and local cases. And the question is, is city building policy only about cities or is it also about taxes, land, uh, different geographies, different sectors? We understand that a city is a lot of things and we, uh, the city is a place for life and our life is work, uh, rest, opportunity to show yourself. Uh, so now you are working at this vision document which sets the principles of our policies after the war. So what's your ideal vision and how do you see this instrument as a step forward to bring this future? Thank you. I'd like to start uh, at Sergei's words about this transition period. Really, a hundred of years ago, Ukraine was taken from the historical natural process and was in an artificial construct called the USSR. And when this ended, we didn't have this essential work on redesigning changes. When we are talking about uh, changes now, we need to remember about that. Our working group has been working for two months and we hear what is there to discuss for so long. I can give you everything you need to tomorrow, but these are only copies from the Soviet period. These two months showed that there is no other way but to make this new model ourselves. It's a huge historical 
process. Uh, we have representatives of different communities who communicate and try to understand one another. It's the first time in our history. And uh, we are working at creating our own Ukrainian model of interrelations between all stakeholders. This should be a model that guarantees, with all the necessary fuses, the balance of interests for all stakeholders. That's a mega task. Why? Because uh, everyone understands that now in Ukraine, well, we used to give more weight to developers. The more square meters they built on a square centimeter of land is the better. But now we are changing this ideology in principle, not even saying some fancy words about people. Like you remember, in the USSR, they used a lot of fancy words, but they used people as a resource. And now we have this transfer, this change. It's understandable for people, but we need to set it, to fix it on the state level. The balance of interests of all stakeholders build our own a construction, discuss it and agree on it. And then everyone will do their job in their sphere of competence, but with a communication, with understanding who does what. And parallel to that, we're discussing the uh, documentation on all levels. Like this year, the general plan for Ukraine is over. And uh, writing, but uh, project writing should be a permanent uh, process at all levels. So we must have formal and informal uh, project design and interrelations between them at all levels should be set. I can say that the biggest challenge we have now is like this. On the state level, everything is understandable. There should be a general scheme of uh, spatial development for Ukraine. Then let's take regional level. What kind of documentation should we have? Uh, look, so we have 27 administrative regions, there are smaller ones, but amalgamated territorial communities means that we must have project documentation for these communities. And here we have a collision. What kind of documentation shall it be? the official documentation which is designed from above and just stored in archives or the kind of documentation communities need and use. And then there is a lower level, the local level. So in this model, in this construct, all these issues, um, they are very uh, very principal. Uh, terms, conditions. We need to understand who does what and how communication is done, who is responsible for what, and how we can prevent any corruption, uh, a kind of uh, prevention is ensuring all kinds of works at all stages. Because control over your funds uh, is a very good means of preventing any uh, breaks, any illegal actions with documentation. It's uh, as easy as uh, it, it must come to the lowest level, like using nails of the proper diameter. So the main conclusion is we should see the situation, uh, what it is, understand what we deal with.
The next is understand what we have but build our own model, our own construct, discuss it, agree on that and then comply with it. There are very good examples, but uh, any suit you wear should suit you, should be your size, should be comfortable for you, should be tailored to your parameters. So we need to tailor this model for us, and that is what we're expected to do. Just one reply. Uh, I liked what Natalia said about the continuing process. We've been talking about it, and that's a very good story. When we uh, understand the project cycle is a cycle. Uh, it doesn't have an end. It goes to the next circle. And that's true about any process. Uh, those of you who were at a tour with me, we were talking about it. Uh, whether it's a project or a real street, uh, it's the same. Uh, when the project is over, it's not the end. We talk to people, we talk to focus group to understand how the project uh, works, whether they like it, what can be changed, what they like the most. So it's an ongoing process. Uh, and it's true for all the project process because our old stereotypic understanding is that every project has an end to that. We've done it and given, and that's all. I think that now you can just say a few words. We have a couple of minutes, but then we'll open the field for questions and answers to working with uh, the audience. I just want to add about a very interesting and important point about our cultural legacy. Uh, at this discussion, I came to understand that planning and building new projects must be differentiated from cultural legacy. What I mean? When we build some object, that's some uh, property, but for it to be a cultural object, it should have this cultural value. So there is one process like building, exploitation, uh, utilization, but if it's some cultural or art object, it's a different story and uh, it's a different direction. And I'd like to say that we have some ideas and we've been working on that for a few years to start differentiating these two processes. I think important here was temporality and how can we approach uh, the city? City is a living organism. I don't like this metaphor with the organism. It is more m signifying what is uh, moving and changing. Uh, something of that kind is changing slower. I need to understand this in the temporality of the city. Some values are more tectonic and value changes take place slower than changes in the material space around us, but we need to think these processes as interrelated, and this is important uh, activity which is going on. I think it's important not to postpone these conversations, difficult conversations that may uh, provoke conflict, but the conflict may be also very productive, that something good and um, shining may grow of. Alexander, you had some questions. Yeah, we're speaking about positive things. I would like to know two positive things. First, is that we experiment so much, we do not wait, we move ahead. And in general, for some period, uh, we will have lots of developments that we may uh, discuss, share experience, and this is important stage for us also while the war is going on. And second, 
uh, creating a city building code. I'm also working in group of uh, urban uh, development code. I would like to support you and say that uh, in the audience there are two or three people who participate in this group activity now. I would like to encourage everyone to watch videos of results which are um, posted on YouTube on development. Those with the group involved, please visit every meeting. We have a lot of activities online. I think this is a good process anyway. And the more all of us are going to be involved and to provide the feedback, this is open process. The better we form this model, and this is about responsibility. If you sign up uh, to participate in some initiatives, it means visiting events and responsibility uh, by time, by expertise in some of our joint area, joint activity on our desired future we are building now. May I add uh, just one minute, please, because we'd like to hear audience. I uh, just my response. I'm very consoled uh, hearing about insurance. It seems to me great that this um, arrangement starts on the level of city building code uh, will be discussed. This is a thing that may drastically change all the processes in designing uh, project management uh, commissioning, and I think it will um, facilitate, as Sergei mentioned, end of project will not end by commissioning the construction uh, subjects will start thinking about how long this house is going to stand or the space area or street, how it's going to be used and how much money will be needed for its exploitation insurance is uh, cool because as our life shows uh, all those repressive methods like uh, giant uh, fines and so on do not work okay someone got fined okay got some lawsuit okay get a deal fine once again you punish specific executive situation did not change globally only insurance that will regulate all of that financially will change the outlook the perspective I think that basically if child is going to be uh, willing to learn to become insurance agent well there's a promising profession okay we have one more question uh, what may you use uh, space to sell garages this is what you may uh, do for a city right now if you'd like to sell it please do so and this is also going outside after this forum with some specific steps that do not just remain in this conversation but also that organizes a forum may convey and keep it like some point of record what is remaining with you after this forum what are the ideas we may use to work on this joint home this um, space in the city which is our joint home please i encourage you to uh, step into conversation to ask to comment on what you heard within a little more than one hour i see and here's all excuse me about this question Imagine that now at a coffee uh, break, Vladimir Alexander Zelensky approaches you and have one minute to answer his question. Uh, did he ask you uh, whether it's necessary to sign draft law 5166 and why? We are trying to avoid this in our discussion all the time. <laughs> that was my question. Your responsibility, please, colleagues, uh, signal who have questions. Uh, okay, questions. You have a minute or even less, 30 seconds, I would say. I would ask uh, about your um, approach. You read it definitely. In this um, edition, no, definitely. I think, in short, everyone understands what we are speaking about. Many contextual points, uh, work of architects, uh, changes. I would ask him if he realizes that uh, there are many contextual points in this draft law. At this point, I will tell him, please do not sign. Uh, the following question, like an an Kavan comedy show to figure out um, Vladimir Alexandrovich, there are many laws I shouldn't sign all of them I would uh, definitely, I don't know 
uh, grab on him and did not let him go till he um, guarantees that he is not going to sign. So the answer is only one, but we are very creative about all of that from all the, I would say that shouldn't. This is um, yesterday and this is not the freshest fish. Uh, the better way is to accumulate money, create a proper platform, and then at the necessary point to implement the fundamentals we have agreed upon at a later point. Thank you. Okay, um, until the air alert reaches all of us, and uh, was uh, mentioned in two points, which should uh, take into account number of floors and um, area density. How to make it so that developers take into account other norms? Uh, you have mentioned this to change um, understanding, maybe some other incentives. Thank you. Changing understanding is a long process, like education, definitely. That's what we are to start uh, from uh, since the very childhood. Uh, but again, uh, we do not have so much time to wait. Those are processes in parallel about the long-term future. I think that now we just need to return, at least I would return the previous um, edition of the city development norms and limitations that the local authorities were providing some time ago where there were more uh, points that could be noted from a municipality. There were some points, so to say, additional requirements. Conventional is saying uh, if city, it shouldn't be some point wishes of some officials. It should be adopted in some uh, municipal strategy discussed and approved, but if the city decides that there should be green roofs, for instance, that 50% of uh, surfaces should be um, absorbing water, be drainable to get adapted to climate change and so on, the city is entitled to mention this in the city development conditions. This is the way in Berlin they limit the number of um, dull services. Dull meaning not water permeable. They say that if it's not water permeable, uh, compensate the surface of water unpermeated uh, surfaces with the green uh, roofing or by uh, water permeable uh, cover or something else, coating. This is a simple mechanism. It's not handy for developers, but it would uh, provide more. It would return some of possibilities for local authorities. Please do not grab the mic from my hands. Please keep it close. Antoli Lindvindov, architect, city planning, because city uh, development is a totally different activity that we used to have in Soviet Union. Now it is step-by-step uh, -step changing its essence and function. So I do not understand why city building code is called city building code. Now in Russia, the city building code was adopted 30 years ago absolutely nothing uh, changed in the way it was adopted there back then i have thank you very much i'm thankful for this professional interest in conversation and possibility to um, participate uh, honestly i'm stupefied by question what can i do to my city personally now i personally can do nothing why should be responsible? Who should be responsible for city building policy? For instance, I wouldn't like to undertake any responsibility for city building policy, though I uh, work with uh, city planning, I develop the master plans, general plans of cities and so on. However, taking responsibility for city building policy is not what I can do because I'm not the city building politician, I'm just the architect and practitioner and city planner. Uh, we had a question about model for development, which city should we have? I think that it was just a joke, uh, a prank, and the members of the forum replied the way because uh, not a single city can be mobile for another city in Ukraine. First of all, we need to know those uh, cities. 
I know Warsaw more or less. I cannot say that was maybe a model for Vinnytsia or something else. It's impossible. Different social, political conditions and so on. So I reply this way to those questions. In terms of city building code, well, let us call it a city building. Okay. May you show on screen this uh, table uh, uh, schemes about issue range and the rest. Very interesting table. I would like to comment on that if someone understood what is um, shown there. Uh, how much time do we have? Please, uh, one minute, if you may. Thank you. Very well represented, a professionally interesting table. I see that members of the group uh, treated pretty responsibly to this reflection and really reflected. In terms of uh, the uh, content of activities, uh, there's nothing um, interesting or uh, that well, I think that the one intermediary chain is missing because issue uh, finding may not go right to designing something else. Maybe before that we should have some concept, uh, strategy, or some other interesting intermediate uh, things uh, that should transfer us from analyzing issue finding to the designing. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Uh, if someone would like to comment, I would like to comment. It was a long question. So I would like to comment uh, briefly in terms of uh, questions, whether they are correct. The questions are pretty abstract, and this is normal, because they should make people reflect after form and so on. I will speak about my own case. I got to my job from the NGO sector, and at the point of time when we are thinking about what we may do, we were mm, thinking, uh, we uh, saw that there are many educational facilities in our city. Uh, that was our speaking about bringing up the client. We organized different events for the city people, and we were thinking that we are doing something useful for city. We believe that we did something useful for cities, so we may uh, speak the same about cities, to get oriented well in the cities. Today we have um, a tour and we have Vienna um, public transport stops uh, planned. Of course, Vienna, different mindset, even climate, but the solutions they have shared that we might uh, use in our case, this is super, this is ideal, or like uh, using castle um, pavement uh, stone uh, used in Vienna uh, in practice there are some uh, points in practice we may orient it by and we shouldn't just discard it and it is uh, very well uh, that city is like a very big uh, cloud someone is oriented by Zurich something by uh, other but there are very many good local cases that we may borrow and do uh, implement them. We had a comment in the audience, is it still um, important, not important anymore? I see also a question. Alexandra uh, from Lviv, I'm a bit mm, excited by inheritance, like some aesthetic um, sites. It seems to be when we work in environment, we need to understand what is more valuable, try to reflect how to keep it. However, just our historical architecture plan suggested that everything before 1939, inheritance, everything after 1939 is dissonating uh, buildings. You know, it's just way too much. If we have some site, do we only have some inheritance in the, some new uh, buildings, starting from not overusing materials for construction that we shouldn't? We need to start from what is better to renew or better just to live as is. 
and not just think that this house is beautiful, we consider this as an um, inheritance. And all the rest, we just um, raise it to the ground and build a new. This opinion was um, discussed a lot when difficult decisions had to be made after Second World War. Now, probably, we need to look at that from a broader perspective, at least uh, take into account the life cycle of um, buildings, uh, construction materials, and so on. Thank you for your question. I introduced this topic maybe um, not very well thought, because it requires more extensive um, discussion. And this uh, topic is uh, complicated. It's not that easy. On the managing uh, cultural inheritance, uh, we mean very complex process, starting from identifying, evaluating, accounting for uh, entering into register and all of that in uh, the setting of a public-private partnership. The uh, historical uh, sites are kept when they fit into life, not just keeping the physical morphology, but uh, making it part of life. And this procedure of making inheritance sites leave, we need to understand if relationships are set with the owner, owner needs to understand that he possesses some um, inheritance site and he is allowed to do this, this and that. This is very complicated multi-tier uh, process that we need to uh, set and uh, work with uh, to see something here like we see in the Europe that we like to visit uh, the sites and to enjoy seeing uh, buildings. Very many organized multi-tier activities are behind that. And we need to have the same system to launch it and to live with it. Then we will not have to save something as emergency uh, process. This process should be organized in a way, but it should be comprehensive, multi-level. This is a difficult topic. I'm ready to discuss it separately. Thank you. I think it's important to have mentioned this cultural heritage and finish this circle. So we came to the past again and came back to uh, the uh, current time. And uh, to sum up, uh, we need to look at all directions, look back, uh, because we cannot invent something out of the blue. We are trying to understand the current times, find data, analyze, set questions, but we should also think about the future and be brave while remembering our uh, baggage. We must look at ourselves to understand and also look at the world to learn from the best and to find uh, different balanced relations with all environments. That's about shared responsibilities. We are looking for the models which can work in our context. And living in a city, that's about us. And not, it's not something abstract. That's about us who are here in this room, who are watching us online and will be living in the future. So I'm urging you to uh, plant the seeds of our beautiful future and start building it now. Thank you for your attention and let's start the closing procedure. Uh, thank you, Natalia, for your moderation. And th I'd like to thank our speakers uh, and the audience for this substantial discussion. And dear friends, now we have 30 more minutes of uh, our time together in this uh, beautiful room. So we'll be finishing. We won't have a break before that. We'll be doing it right now. So I'd like uh, to check where we are, uh, how attentive you are. I can see some movements around the room. Uh, let's try another trick. So please, those of you who are still here with me now, let's do this. 
Okay, thank you. Now another trick. I'm asking those of you who can hear me, please stand up and exchange your seats with somebody at your side. I didn't promise it to be easy. Okay, thank you. There are uh, people who oppose this, but it's okay. So, those who are standing, please, you're welcome to come here, take the seats. So, now let's do another trick. So, those of you whose attention is here at me, do this again, please. Okay, thank you. That's great. Now I have more people doing that. And now we have a session of this common closure, and we would like to get some feedback from you and to hear your impressions, your thoughts, your pondering over these two days. Let me remind you that uh, during these two days we were talking now about our shared home, about housing policy, uh, about uh, uh, the regional policy, how we can cooperate locally, how we can cooperate to work with that. We've had some discussions, workshops, and uh, we had some input lectures and we hope that you had a good chance for networking yesterday for changing your ideas that so that what was going over these two days and uh, now uh, we want you to share your ideas your impressions and uh, it's not just some feedback but it's also your investment in uh, the creation of this forum because it's a living thing it uh, will go on and it's really important for us so that's a classical part of our forum uh, we invite you again to this Mentimeter. There you can see some questions. There are several of them. And if you need any help with uh, uh, going there, with using the QR code, if you need any help, please show that. Please, uh, can, can I see which of you came from the workshop? Okay, so I'll write it on the chat for those who are still coming here to join the Mentimeter. So here you can see the scale uh, to assess so whether you had a good opportunity to get to learn something new, then please you can assess the opportunity to find new connections and then the general assessment of the forum. So that's just the first question to start with. The following will take some more energy from you. Okay, I can see you voting. Thank you. I think we can move on. So the next question is, if you were organizing this forum, what would you do differently? So maybe you would want more of something or less of something. Maybe you think that something should definitely happen at the Ukrainian Urban Forum, or it should be done in this, some specific way. So please share your ideas. I can see more engagement, more participation, then some introductory theory. Something about the air. Yeah, there are too many of us for this room. More dialogues, okay. Less monologues. More stickers. More merchandise. Another party. I can see many people writing about OMS, urbanist course, uh, 
I hope uh, okay great if you can't see the screen a look around you can find another one but we are voicing some points okay mapping everything was fine air conditioning okay so I won't read all the points I am leaving it for further work with our team so let's move on so what was the most useful for you at this forum please be as specific as possible think about your personal perspective uh, not that you think that something is wow great but uh, think about your experience your expectations uh, think about what you came with here today so what was the most useful helpful for you okay new colleagues meeting new people Ivan's lecture networking verbitsky speech networking understanding the discourse and challenges in rebuilding communication okay i can see ivan's lecture is on top the possibility to sell the garage thank you for keeping the line whoever you are but that's like a red line in our forum okay discussing the city development the possibility to leave the war project and come back to rebuilding perspective okay we've been talking a lot about that Ivan said that forum will come to Bukovina being, uh, I understand that everything depends on people and everything's possible okay Pecha Kucha communication workshops okay thank you you can keep doing that if you need more time you can see that you can come back to the question we can see that networking and reflection okay so let's move on to the next question we have two more so uh, you can think of how much effort you have so what new ideas did you uh, have during this forum if you didn't have any new ideas you don't have to answer but if you have how are you planning to use these ideas thank you study urban planning work at uh, community capacity building we've been talking about that yes build participation in communities during the process of code discussion analytics of house building sector preparing specialists on urban studies changes in communities find communities ah, you still have some time to find your community what to implement everything I've learned in my community, invest in people. Uh, government is a facilitator between stakeholders. Okay, then think about projects which are not over at the point of implementation. Work at resilience of my community if you have any desire to comment on your points uh, you can take a mic okay buy some flowers wonderful uh, move to Vinica. i think it's a wonderful result of our forum to present this city does anyone has have a desire to comment on your words no then let's move on and now we have uh, the pre-last question please think well on all 
your impressions and accumulate them in one word. It can be any word, some association, something that can characterize the urban forum this year. That's for the organizers. Please think about this year's forum in one word. And here we would really want you to comment, so please raise your hands if you can unpack your word or association and share your ideas. You're welcome. Please don't be shy. These are the last moments in this space, among these people, the last chance to say what you think. Thank you for the uh, for organizing this wonderful event, and I think inspiration is uh, the most important thing that we can take home with us, because talking to the people who think the same way as you, that's invaluable. I am talking about myself. Uh, after this forum, I have desire to act, and that's a good incentive to work. Thank you. My word was reloading, uh, because coming here, hearing all this uh, interesting information, it's like rebooting uh, and uh, loading for new work. So thank you, everyone. I was catching every word. That, that was absolutely new for me. I am a newbie here. Thank you. Anyone else who wants to comment? I'd like to thank you, really. It was great. And my word was deconstruction, which I learned yesterday. Uh, it's more about uh, uh, how something can be multi-layered, multifaceted, and uh, that uh, this difference in people's ideas, how people share these ideas and arrive at something common is the essence of this forum. Thank you. I like it so much. Anyone else? So I want to thank you very much and third time the conference in Ukraine and all they were very good organized and uh, so so I'm inspired by many things I have seen in the city and or your presentation so I can say that after all this conference and all my my visit because I, it is part of my longer two and a half visit in Ukraine so I'm inspired so you can say that here is the world how is what's your name? I, I'm Hubert Trapp. I'm from Poland and I'm also the member of the Roundtable. Yes, Thank you very much. I was afraid I could uh, uh, distort your name. So that's your third time at the Urban Forum. And thank you that you think it's well organized and that you take so much from the discussions. And, uh, yeah, the, so many thoughts from presentations. And we have a little time, so little time left. So please signal if you want to have a go. I'll read some words. Some of them are dialogue, hope, initiative, proactive, meaningful, Pecha Kucha, which is obvious, housing, drive, uh, patron, dog patron, community, invasion, blah, 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 participation, cooperation, rebooting, 
the joy of creation, networking, lunch, series, and at last. Okay, colleagues, now we have, uh, if you still want to share some thoughts with organizers, if you want to say something, to comment on something, there is another question in Menti. Please open it, but don't show it on the screen. Now you have the opportunity to vote. Uh, so if you have something to say, something meaningful to tell the organizers, you have an opportunity to do it now. This question will be open for some time. So if you can do it quickly, you're welcome. But it will also be open for some time. So now I'd like to give the floor to Anastasia uh, to close, officially close this forum. Officially closing is what I wasn't ready uh, for. I would like to finalize uh, with gratitude. So I would like to start uh, saying thank you to our international partners you have seen on screen. I would like also to thank our Ukrainian partners, Agency of City Development, Agency of Spatial Development, Agency of uh, Participatory Development of Communities. I would also like to thank our wonderful speakers, uh, moderators, uh, translators who did everything so that we understand each other today. Our wonderful technical team who have done everything. Uh, this dog is also saying thank you everyone, a wonderful technical team who did everything so that we could hear uh, each other, uh, see each other, and for those that couldn't arrive today to be able to see us on internet, I would also like to thank this wonderful Space Quadrat Hub uh, City in City that were receiving our workshop restaurant Marcel that made wonderful coffee break for us and of course I will thank a lot to our wonderful team from SEDAS Katarina Babic please uh, come here to us uh, Katarina Babic, Alexander Prima Alina Halashvili Anna Vorobyova Yulia Nazarenka, Natalia Lomonosova Olena Sirbu Tatiana Zhirebkina Lorina Federer, also Ivan Verbetsky, also we have Marina Bakanka with us, and our wonderful facilitators, Alena Angelov and Karina Fursa, also wonderful team of the City Development Institute, and Nazar Kavalenka, and go here. Jana Tchaikovska, I do not see if Jana is here, please come here. Victoria Pisotska. Excuse me, Katarina, Katarina, and Slavic Palgun, I don't see if Slavic is here. If you are, please come here. I would also like to thank our photographers, Mikola Arkaluk and Sergei Olinik, who have done a lot for this uh, forum to be documented. And as you may see, I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. I, you see that there's a huge team of people behind the forum and very much work which is often uh, remaining unnoticed, often remains beyond the screen. It's often like that, not only at our forum, in many areas of life and in our cities, we often do not notice people who stay behind the curtain because cities are not only business, not only innovations, not only creative, not only those who are in light, but many other people who do invisible labor for everything to operate, for transport to move, to water to pour from the faucets, for streets to remain, uh, uh, good uh, and all people require support uh, sometimes we do not notice it we sometimes also need support we are vulnerable but there are people who require the support more than others 
It is important thus for me that we understand that it is worth to support and develop policies that will enable this necessary support to others. Housing, affordable housing is one of such policies. However, if you return to the forum as this is the and I think uh, about the future on the one hand that is going to rest tomorrow, but on the other hand, I'm thinking about results of this forum. And for me, the fact that this forum took place is a huge result, as this space is a possibility to stay together, to look at each other, to share ideas and thoughts, to hug each other. This is uh, what doesn't happen often, unfortunately. And I think that this is the feeling of togetherness, unity is what we take home. So I want to thank each one of you. I want to thank our wonderful, great, smart, uh, amazing audience. Let us applaud to one another and thank you. I hope that we will meet uh, next year also. You know what I forgot about? We have a declaration, declaration from Ukrainian urban uh, forum despite it was written before forum also may be considered its result if you like to sign this declaration or to get familiarized it will be on our website status website so you will have something to do before you going home Ivan is saying that it is at registration if you haven't um, taken it yet please take it and on WhatsApp also so we're going to publish results in our wonderful social media I hope to see you next time Bye -bye.